Welcome everyone to the PJ's Cast. I'm your host Pierce, alongside of my good pal uh, Dylan and uh, our uh, unofficial fifth member of the show, uh, Jacob, wearing his Jonathan Taves jersey. For those who are watching in the crisp 1080p on YouTube now, let's go. Look at this beautiful hawk. Oh, I love it so much. This jersey is so great. I mean, ignore the numbers and everything, but everything else is great. Yeah, ignore the the number and the C and then the logo, and it's not that bad of a jersey. Yeah. But no, I, he, what's what's the thing? It's like he's wrong, but he's got the, the he's got the spirit or whatever. He's got the spirit. He's got, he's got, he's got yeah. the spirit. But does he have the passion? No, the listen, passion. I have the passion apparently. <laughs> but what's the passion, passion at all? Loki, I want to talk about this on the podcast because he fascinates me so fucking much. <laughs> Curtis from Alberta. God, Jacob, do you know who Curtis from Alberta I, is? I do, yeah, because uh, he's, he's my favorite. Me. Yeah. He followed you? Yeah, that's all. Dude, I, don't, I guess I the, don't have the passion because he hasn't followed me. You're not in the group chat yet. Should we post that? I was like, oh my God. The oh, I texted voice. Pierce immediately. Yeah. That was the first thing I said. Oh, okay. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce Curtis that. from that Alberta. Like, told me I have the passion. <laughs> oh, man. No, but no, like, this? seriously, I wish there were more hockey fans like that that were just so, like, that radiate kindness and it's just. That dude's like a fan. Like, please, can this guy not be a piece please, of shit? four like children that? and a wife. Like, please, can this guy just be like, you know, salt of the earth, kindness? Like, listen, we need more of him and less backheads in the world from fandom. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We need more outspoken people like him who are good than uh, outspoken people who are like complete assholes. Because, like, if you go on Twitter, you're going to find one of him and about 50,000 of the other kind. And it's like, just, just be he nice. posted a video. He was like, he he put a Ryan Whitney's ad in, and he's like, "Hey Ryan, I know there's some bad Maple Leafs fans, but you know what? Most of us are just trying to watch hockey and uh, be good Leafs fans here. So don't let that cloud your judgment or whatever." And cheers. And he's like, Hold. "He might be the most stereotypical Canadian ever." I mean, uh, I love. I just like much. someone who can be that happy all the time. Like, at least makes me a little happier. Cause I'm such a fucking cold hearted person that like, I can't even imagine <laughs> being that excited. So like, um, it's nice seeing people like that. And like, and, and, like you go look at his comments on his following and stuff and everyone's super nice. Like everyone's super nice. And it's like, it's wow, so it's nice. crazy what a community will do when people aren't toxic fucking shitheads. It's crazy. It is. It blows my mind, but either way, I, I love him and we need more people like him and more fans like him for sure. Nah, but we got the guy who keeps arguing that Matthews didn't get 50 goals in his last 50 games. That's that's where we're No, at. he got 50 in his 51. last 57, even though he literally has, like, what, 58 on the season? Hey, hey, he got 51 in 50. Get it right. <laughs> get it right there, NHL record books. Put that in your record book and smoke I, I, it. That's the stupidest debate because it's like he got – 50 or 51 in 50 games just because okay, it's not the start but of the season. is it has to be yeah. in like the 50 it, goals in the first but if, games yeah if you don't team. want to put it on the wikipedia article that's one thing make a different one then make like 50 and 50 and then people who have scored 50 goals in 50 games whatever but like don't discredit them it's still 50 and 50 it's just not the definition they came up and with. you know me i will discredit the least at any chance i, I mean if it's austin matthews yeah, but no. like come on <laughs> if I'm, yeah it's... if i'm saying it then you are wrong you're in you the can wrong. discredit the leafs and you can you know if you want to meme about it go ahead but just like you look like an idiot if you really believe that like you saying it didn't happen means it didn't happen yeah well, i don't know there's just so many hills and hockey twitter and like i don't know from an outside perspective but like canadian hockey twitter specifically where like that people just die on the oddest hills known to man like they it's yeah it's the there's typical canadian hockey twitter and then there's everything against the leafs hockey twitter where like they could win the cup and they will find like if you thought tampa winning like the mickey mouse corona cup was bad <laughs> wait till you see the leafs win a cup ever Every Dude, Montreal fan. rise when they win the cup. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, like Vancouver, the, those riots are gone. Whenever Toronto does anything, it's gonna be hell on Twitter because you're gonna have half the fan base or half of the hockey world in Toronto is gonna be like, "We're the greatest." Everyone else is gonna be like, "Now nah, this didn't happen." We don't remember. The, the, the Toronto Pardon? can handle a Raptors parade. Try handling a Maple Leafs for, for parade if they oh. ever win. We talked about this on the show. Like, if the Leafs win the cup, I, they got to shut down the whole city for the day. Because I don't know. Be international news, probably. <laughs> I don't even know. If, I don't even know if one day we'll do it. I'm not gonna oh, lie. That city's gonna long. be destroyed. 
No, and like that's the thing too, because like, yeah, you bring up the point that like, yeah, it could just make things worse. But also, I look at fan bases like the Capitals and Blues who used to be extreme. Well, the Caps are still kind of fucking toxic, but the Blues used to be extremely fucking toxic before they won a cup, and now they won a cup, and they kind of just like, yeah, you know, we got we're, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna shove it in your throat yeah. because we haven't won anything. We need to have some form of validation. Which yeah. I'm gonna point out, that's what a lot of teams that haven't won championships do. Minnesota, but anyway, we're just going to continue. <laughs> I think it depends on what fan base you're a part of is the the fan bases you encounter the most. Like as a Sabres fan, obviously in the Atlantic, most of the other Atlantic fan bases, I'm always like, man, you guys fucking suck. Like you guys are just the worst, like Tampa's and Florida's. And then I'm like, maybe it's just because <laughs> I see you guys all the time. Because like, I've never met a bad Sharks fan. I've met like two of you and you both happen to be kind. But I'm sure if you're an Anaheim fan, you're going to be like, man, every Sharks fan. I have never met an Anaheim fan, I swear. <sighs> exactly. <laughs> hey, you're just not – there's no rivalry there. So, like, maybe when the Hawks and the Ducks played, if you were big on Twitter. But, like, it's just – if you're not in that – yeah. If you're not in that circle, you're not going to see it. And if you're not successful, you don't see it. Like, if I wasn't a Sabres fan, I would notice half the Sabres Twitter because, like, they, what do you – they're gonna chirp, and you're just gonna be like, "I don't care what you're saying, just yeah. shut up, please." Oh, we do man. not care. Like, what? What was the one thing that I saw today? Where, like, this is like peak example, of, like hills to die on. I think it was about Tyler Boucher and how he's like <laughs> clearly not a top ten pick, but Sens fans are dying on the hill. That like, oh man, what did I see? There was one where he was like, "What a hit by Tyler Boucher." He got a boarding penalty for this one, but I think it did, I think the ref just didn't know because of the loud collision. And I'm just like, oh my god, are we are talking about the Leem's helmet the or whatever? Like, is that yeah. Oh my right god. He has, he, he's like he, he's not even point per game, and he's in his draft plus one year in the OHL. <laughs> like, he has three points in the next like, Wait till they own the yeah. Leafs and the Habs when he gets to the NHL. I was like, didn't he have to leave the NCAA because like he yes. wasn't getting playing time because he was so bad? Yes, it's terrible. Like, Listen, who was I on get the board the... when they took Tyler Boucher again? <laughs> they could have had Cole Let's... Stillinger. They could have had hey. so many players. Stillinger was right there. Uh, both the goalies, Coast and Walsh, that were right Coaster, there. Yeah. Fucking... They could have had Nolan Allen. Dude, Nolan Allen is a better value pick than what they got. Honestly, yeah. Shit. So, Tyler... All right, maybe we didn't have the oh worst first round thing. How about that? So, so, so Allen, you... perhaps I treated you too hard. So Tyler Boucher went 10th. Uh, Arizona's with 11th, but that was nullified because they cheated or whatever, something stupid. Uh, Cole Sillinger. But that's, Matthew, all, that's all well and good. We'll let them Matt, Matt Coronado, uh, Sabres second pick, Isaac Rosen, Kosa, and then you had other How guys that were there. Like, doing? Do you know what he's doing? He has struggled in the SHL uh, like most of the other Swedish kids have. Well, I shouldn't say like most. Uh, I don't know how Lysel's done, but remember how we were talking last pod about how Eklund went That's back weird. over and he only has like 11 He has one goal, I think, and like almost He had one games. goal and like 11 assists. Yeah, it's it's the same for Rosen. They're just not getting playing time, which is unfortunate. But um, Yeah, Wallstedt was there. Borgule was there. Yeah, There's a lot of guys that could have they just took the guy who hits and was projected as the third round player because Dude, I literally when I have my list out, I think I had him like at the end of the second round or at the beginning of the third yeah. round. <laughs> like Yeah, you look at the guys in the second round, there's just guys that stand out like Matthew Knees was could would have been a better pick. You know, uh where is he? Obviously Stankovin could have took Shebrakov. Sure. There's just guys all over the place where it's like, why? Why did you take him at ten? But I don't know that he it's is a great wire effect. <laughs> it is a great account. I, I love seeing him just <laughs> go off, being like, "You know, yeah. Dylan, I believe in analytics, but we need boots on the ground scouting. We need players." Oh, I, I'm so glad this is what their boots on the ground scouting got them. Like, it's, oh, it looks so fucking good on you. All but, I ever think about is boots on the ground. Is like 2016 when Call of Duty brought in jetpacks, and everyone was like, "I want my old Call of Duty back." Not my I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. That's all I can think of. Cause... No, you're so now. I'm just like I got took into the fever dream that was like Infinite Warfare. I it's like I was like I Advanced was... Warfare Bunny Hopping Simulator 2000. Listen, Advanced Warfare Hardpoint, amazing. I will die. Oh yeah, yeah. Up yeah. Street, a lot of fucking fun. Like honestly, oh, the jetpack shit was good when they did it right. But holy fuck, when they did Infinite Warfare or whatever, I played one day and I was just like, holy shit, what did you do? Like I'm not touching this game. The entire year, and I deleted it right off my console. Like I can't. I don't think they've hit. I don't think they've had a good game since Black Ops Three. 
Sorry. Uh, time no, time. No, no, it's okay. I uh, while you were doing that, I texted. There's something I thought of that we could talk about later that came April, up today. Literally, let's bring it up right now since we're on That's, prospects. Because uh, see, I felt like I I just came across my Twitter feed as we were talking. Yeah. About, I felt like it was the greatest thing today. Um, it looks like uh the OHL is gonna have another exceptional status player. Dude, guess what year yeah. he's born in. 07? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 07. I think he's the same age as Nielsen Spence. It's kind of, that's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Demonic screech. Oh, God. Yeah, I think I, uh, pardon if I pronounce it wrong, but I believe it's Michael Misa, M I S A. Going to go that first over. Like, yeah. That sounds like Jar Jar Binks' word, like at the end. Michael Misa. Michael Misa. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's great news. I I love to see that with the exceptional status players. The last couple have been great. When you look at like Bedard, Wright, yeah, skip skip Joe Valeno because somehow he got exceptional status. That's in right. That's right. Joe Valeno got it. <laughs> we had that talk in the group chat today about uh, exceptional status players, and we were like, "Hey, do you know the last one in the queue?" And everyone was like, "Crosby, Huberto, McKinnon, Joe Valeno." Offering your exceptional right status or my nope. No, no, only one so. one in the Q, five in the OHL, and it's uh, Tavares, uh, Ekblad, Ekblad McDavid, Conor, or Wright, uh, McDavid, and Sean Day. And Sean yeah. Day's Sean only Day, one. Yeah. Hey, holy shit. Sean Day's the only one that hasn't panned out at all, and Valeno's at least looking like a bit of an NHL. I think he's got 66 games played this season, so it's something. Sean Day's in Tampa. Joe Valeno, known dude, to always have good. a medium elite potential back in, like, NHL 18. Oh, my God, dude. That, so did Sean Day. I remember... Uh, Sean Day like, is like, Victor like, Hammond's next partner. <laughs> I remember, Sean like, 2013 when he was in the game, and I went to go see him live at a fucking school event. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm, making him, I'm making him, I think, like... I think at the time it was in franchise, it was like the stars. So I'm like, I'm making him five star green. He's the greatest <laughs> player I've ever seen. That's how long ago it was. It wasn't like how five long ago it was. Five green stars. But uh, yeah, if you really want to throw back, you use the the letter grade. The letters. The I remember the letters. Yeah, that's like angel twelve. Give me Cody my at one point. Let me, <laughs> Let me pull my BlackBerry phone. I gotta make a trade Let with the cover. Atlanta Thrashers. Let me cover. Oh, Pierce, you want Chris Pronger? Let me cover. Let me cover. Oh, God. That just brought back memories I didn't need. Oh, man. Fun well, fun. Well, also, remember, Chris Pronger, speaking of Chris Pronger, he got dunked on today. About the I don't know why he got dunked on. He made uh, so many good points where it was like, hey, this is kind of what a typical NHL goes through. And everyone was like, mm, yeah, but you're rich. And it's like, that's not the. I don't think he's trying to be like, "Woe is me." I made. Yeah, play. he's, he's made literally money. just he's ex- just trying to say the. Like, he's explaining how some money. players are that have poor money management blow through their fucking money yeah. so fast. Yeah, it's and you wonder why these guys don't open up about this stuff because the second they start talking about it, fans are like, "Yeah, but you're rich." I'll never see five million dollars in my life. He still life. make more than ninety five percent of the world. <laughs> if I made that much money, I can retire right now. Blah, blah, blah. It's like cool. You're not him. I, 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 and I love seeing the fans who are like, mm, are you good at hockey? Do you bring anything yeah. to the table worth the value? No, shut up. That's what I thought. Like, I love the fans who are, like, uh, who are like, yeah, but why would you spend so much on food? They're professional athletes. They have to. You think they're just going to eat cheeseburgers all day? What the Bro, fuck? Bro, they have to eat a very fucking good diet all the time. You have and to. you got to think, dude, if you're, if you're like a, let's say like you're a, like a, you know, like, like what do I want? A replacement level player, let's say. And you're yeah, signing just... a different spot every year. It's like, dude, you got to pay. Like, rent's not the same everywhere. Taxes aren't the same everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, everything gets, like, Absolutely. that's why, like, I don't blame people. Like, I don't blame, like, the Leafs guys or, like, guys in Montreal if they want to get paid. It's like, dude, I see yeah. the taxes. You're going <laughs> to get as much money as you can. It's like, good uh, lord. Yeah. The people who are Absolutely. against players getting money is hilarious to me. Like, oh, let's show my team. Teams, Go beat it. Go get it yeah, unless unless you're yeah. a Saber or Blackhawk, where it's like, no, you're taking the discount. Yeah, I don't know. Sh- Eleven no, million dollars? Discount. No. <laughs> Sorry, McDavid. Leave yeah. man. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It's just. Don't you want back. to play the elite rights of fucking Calvin Nahan? That's what I thought. Yes. Leave man, buddy. <laughs> um, they dunk uh, uh, you. I think I want to play with Reese Johnson on his new yeah. two-year contract. <laughs> Reese Johnson. Now he earned that deal though. Good for him. Oh, oh, honestly, for that money, like what it's eight hundred K, so it's completely variable. That's that is literally if he's yeah, nothing, it's, there's you can no bury issue that, that in the minors so so easily. He's a good fourth liner. Like I told us, I, I I've said this to Pierce a couple times. Like since Carpenter's left, I feel like he's filled that void pretty well. They need. Oh, yeah. Like I think I've told Pierce for a couple months now. They need a couple guys with some sandpaper on their bottom part of the roster just because of the way they play. So to have a guy like Johnson there is going to help. 
Like, he's not afraid to lay the yeah. body. He's not afraid to go to the dirty areas, kill penalties. Like, you just need stuff like that. At the end I, gotta the go, I gotta apologize to him. I thought he was, like, 28. He is 23. No, he's 23, I think. Yeah, he's, he's 20, 20, 24 in the summer. I thought he was way older. Maybe I'm thinking of Carpenter. He's, like... Yeah, Carpenter's like almost like, 30. He's, yeah. he's up there. But yeah, no, for like 800k for a 23 year old who, like, if his game falls off, you just put him on waivers. Or it's the minors. same That's... thing with uh McKenzie and yeah. Twistle and Mike Harmon, like, uh, they're they might be solid fourth line guys, and if not, you're not paying you're, enough, you're yeah. not paying them anything. And you, yeah, it's nothing like the other R. Johnson who in the is it the Islanders you got paid like fucking oh Ross <laughs> yeah Ross Johnson you got, like, I was like on. where are you trying to go here I'm like oh I was like Ryan Johnson? Contract? Yeah. no Ross no, Johnson no, that's a he got, yeah he got one million for four years at twenty eight that's see that's a bad deal you want to talk that's about a Lou oh no, sorry he loves giving people terms massive class <laughs> he's got one point one million for four years he had a one by four before and he just got extended hey he took a pay cut he's a gentleman. <laughs> Yeah, Lula Morello offered him two and a half, and he said, "No, that's that's you got to give that money to Casey's and Zekas. <laughs> give that oh, to Cal no. Clutterbuck and oh, get a resign." Zach, the Islanders literally have their entire roster locked in for at least two years. Like, go look at their cap friendly; it's kind of weird. <laughs> I think besides Barzell, who's on two years, but like, and they're gonna win the lottery because they're gonna miss the playoffs somehow. Can we and not? Come back uh, on could you imagine Barzell and Wright? I'm sorry, I don't want to talk into existence. That's actually kind of like a sexy one too. And then they're gonna bury right because he's not better than fucking Brock Nelson. Let's go, <laughs> love that. Not good as Casey yeah. Zizekas either. So do you, you, you just see Reese Johnson being your four C next year? Then that like you know fourth kind minor, of fourth yeah, minor, yeah, minor, so cool. like yeah. It's like a... they'll well, like they'll get Kara back next year, who will be their four C. Hopefully, yeah. I know he had a rough year with injuries. And then, like, mm-hmm. honestly, the way Tyler Johnson's playing, he's a fourth liner. They got Mackenzie Gentwistle, who's a fourth liner. Like, fourth line's fine. Fourth line's going to be fine. Fourth They're line. fine. It's just – and it's, like, really the whole Blackhawk system. They got enough of those guys. They have no mm-hmm. high-end guys. No, that, that's that's fair. And he's a good AHL yeah. guy yeah. if he's not going to be there. Yeah. So. It's fine. Yeah, no, uh, the, the AHL's important, man. Like – Mm-hmm. Look at it right now for what Rockford's doing. Like it's bringing at least at least a glimmer of hope to the Blackhawks organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's one of those deals. I don't think any fan can really complain unless you really hate Reese Johnson for whatever reason. But that's just a, that's just a good deal. It's yeah. Whatever. Reese Johnston's hit my dog. I hate him. <laughs> slap with my daughter. I can't believe it. <laughs> slap with my daughter. He spit in my face. He spit in my face. It's just like the picture of Yammer Yager with the girl in his bed. Yeah, just like put <laughs> the supermodel. I love that. Yeah. That's perfect. So, yeah, so that's a shout out Reese Johnson for the contract. Shout, shout out to out my out boy Reese. Shout out to Michael Alberta boy, I believe. Yeah, Michael Massa for the oh, uh, Alberta boy he scored against the Flames. Good and... Alberta boy. Oh, did the Flames play? You know what? Good th- that I'm pretty sure reached. That's his only goal of the year. And I remember when he scored that goal. That was the first time that that line of Gaudreau, Lindholm, and Kachuk was on the ice for a five-on-five goal, and it was because like Jacob Marstrom turned the puck behind the turn over the puck behind the net. That's the first one. That yeah, yeah that was the first. And one that was like year, back yeah, in November, or December, eight, eons ago. Jesus, pretty sure I was seeing a turn when that happened. And I came out I was like, Reese oh. Johnson scored really. <laughs> good for him. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, good for him. And then I saw Seth Jones get cooked on the game winner, and I was like, oh, okay, good for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just just looking at the scores from today, and I just saw that uh, LA is not having a good day so far. <laughs> Beat the Black yeah, and they, they had a bad game. yesterday. Nothing prepares you when you play a real team the next night. God, they, they, <laughs> what do you mean? Yes, I, they had a bad yesterday too. They lost. Oh wait. <laughs> oh wait. No, they beat the Hawks five oh, two. Okay, but like for real though, they had. They had to go to Colorado on the second half of a back-to-back. What track? That's so hard. That and sucks. Lo- Going to have a bad time. Sucks. They're losing four nothing in the first. <laughs> it's terrible. Nico and class, I was going to say this segues perfectly into something Pierce wanted to talk about. about the, oh yeah, that's just the, a, that's just a long line of the oh. that, the things that Philadelphia has done wrong this year. Why would you ever oh. wave Obi Kubel compared to other players? Like, I just. 
But they gotta play that guy from the ECHL, whatever his name was. They gotta pay Kevin Hayes nine thousand dollars for uh, every second he's on the ice. He's so good, bro. Oh my god. No, I'll re- I'll reach your peck to Kevin Hayes. He secured that big, and I I'll reach your peck that. Isn't he a former Blackhawks prospect that didn't sign? Yeah, we, we don't talk about that. No. <laughs> didn't want to so play two C with the Blackhawks, so he went to the. Why would you ever want to be the second line center for Patrick Kane and win a Stanley Cup? Come on now. Because you could do that. Why would you ever want to be the guy uh, who plays in Hawks when Kane throws him over stick? I don't even know who he was the 2C for. He could be the 2C for Chris Kreider, 50-goal scorer. Has Kane ever scored 50 goals? That's a real question. I have no idea. Ah, uh, you're right. He's you're actually right. come close. But I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he's come close. I don't, know if, I, like, I don't know if he actually has ever hit 50. but that's... He's a playmaker. Like It's crazy. He's going to break his career high in assists this year. Like, Yeah. But he's not going to. close to 70, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's got 62. Oh, my God. 60 or 61 right now. Oh I, it's crazy how good of a season he's having offensively. And then I saw his like uh, J Fresh chart, and it's like, yeah, his WAR is like eighteen. I was like, yeah, it's almost like he is a power play merchant, and oh. he never has been good at five on five. So, or he has been yeah. good at five on yeah. five at times, but this season it's just not there. It's so. been bad. I think but he's got like who yeah, among he's, the Blackhawks has been good. That's true. I, I think you, you, no matter how everyone says, oh, it's uh, it's weighted just on the player and all that. There's no way you can tell me that a player wouldn't have a better like war and stats like that if he's on a better team. No, it's it's literally like that's the um, like that's the point I always make where it's like you can't judge analytics on wingers all the time. I just feel mm-hmm. like because. You could have such an awfully gifted winger like King, where the analytics are just going to tell you he's below replacement level, which is just not fucking true. That's because is analytics crazy. weigh so heavily on defense, and Patrick Kane has never played that. That's why Valerie Nachushkin is like the best player in the world. Jonathan Taze's analytics were cracked as fuck back in the day. Yeah. But Same that's reason a... Austin Matthews is cracked as fuck analytics, because he's got decent defensive analytics right now. So they just go through the roof. And my, my favorite thing, though, is you look at McDavid and Matthews' uh, analytics, and it's like Matthews is really good, or he's fairly good defensively, but McDavid's so good offensively, it somehow still weighs it out. It's, dude, he's so fucking stupid how good he is at hockey. Is Bro, Carmen really is being hockey. underrated this year? Ooh. I think he is. McDavid? Like, yeah. Like, sure, if you want to say Matthews. I feel like having the, yeah. people aren't talking of en- enough about how good of a season he's having. He's probably he's the up. standard. Yeah. It, it's, it, that still sucks, though. Like, he's going to get, like, 100 like, points or Everyone's something. just and like, he's, oh, that's Connor McDavid. But, that's like, Connor McDavid. Who cares? Good enough about how good he is. And Pretty sure it's going to be a career high in points for him. Like, I'm almost yeah. positive. His career high is 116. He hasn't had – no one's had more than the 128 from Kucherov yet, I'm pretty sure. No, yeah, like I, don't, I don't think era. I don't think anyone's gonna the beat that era. this year. Nah, because it had a little cold spurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, McDavid's got one hundred eight and seventy three. So if he, he has hit nine it, games if, to be get nine points and be his career high. I think oh, I say he I, I think it. he I think he shatters his career high. I think he ends up with like one twenty. One twenty, yeah. yeah. But uh, which is still fucking nuts. Which is this is how you can tell McDavid's not good defensively. He's only a plus twenty two. I can't believe it. Wow. Bring, bring back plus minus. <laughs> those are really my dad protected. I was to the Mike's war last night. <laughs> McDavid, <laughs> I'm sorry. McDavid has 42 goals. I thought he was having like a career low shooting percentage. What happened? He legitimately he might have gets so many shots. Jesus. And McDavid's gotten better at goal scoring every year. It's hilarious. Yes. 30, 40, 41, 34 and 64, 33 and 56, and now 42. That's so it's and a career high goals for that. His face offs are above 50% for the first time in his career. No, like, I'm so serious. Like, if you go look wow. at uh, Crosby and McDavid's analytics from like the same age, they look almost identical, like defense yeah. and everything. There's yeah, like Crosby, Crosby didn't get good at yeah. defense, so he's on the other side of 30. So, mm-hmm. like, anyone who says McDavid needs to be good at defense, kick rocks. Crosby won three cups. He needs to have a Steve Eiserman oh, yeah. moment. Make yeah. McDavid doesn't need to get good at defense. Uh, McDavid's GM needs to get, or get good at building a own team. Own him. Own him. Exactly. That's it's not that hard. They just need dunking the other. <coughs> the other ten forwards need to learn how to score goals. There we go. How about that? Yeah, love, love Jesse Pugliari, but hey, when you're gonna miss three empty nets in the same game, maybe maybe there's a little bit of an issue. Yeah, just, you know, but they can work on your shooting in the offseason. Score is like ninety percent or something when he's on the ice, so that's cool. It is kind of insane. He's such a good fucking like underrated kind. Of, I don't call him a power forward, but like 
play driver. You can be perfect. I'm trying to think of like a NHL 22 turn. I'm like, he's not a two way forward. He's not a power he's forward. He's not driver. a sniper. <laughs> they gotta come up. Guy. They like, gotta Kako's get. Kind of like that a yeah. lot too. I know yeah. he just came back to me, but like if you look at yeah. Kako's analytics, he drives play really well. It's just there's no finishing. Mm-hmm. So but they gotta come up with a new turn, like new player roles in NHL 22. This is off topic, but it kind of ties into this. Where like not everyone fits into the same five roles. Please, yeah. and no one's an enforcer anymore. So just like no one's a grinder. Right? I'm gonna make Sidney Crosby a grinder one time and see what happens. Because he's the best grinder. <laughs> I'm gonna make Sidney Crosby a grinder account. That's more content. There we go. Honestly, Sidney Crosby <sighs> a grinder in NHL 23. What shock to face on the Pierce video. knows this. I've said Sidney Crosby's the greatest grinder in NHL history. Just like I'm uh, sorry, I concur. Like literally. No one can get the puck off him in the corners. Like, I literally, like, my favorite thing is going to see Sidney Crosby in person and watching the defenseman, like, audibly shit themselves on the ice every time he steps mm-hmm. off. You just see their demeanor change immediately once Sid gets on the ice. And the only guys to do that since right now are, like, in this generation are McDavid, Matthews, and McKinnon. Like, I don't mm-hmm. I don't think anyone else, the second they yeah. steps on the ice, I guess, I guess dry settle too. I guess dry settle. I forgot dry settle. That's disrespectful. Dry settle. Would you put dry settle firmly at number four for forwards? I'd put him at like. Four. He's a ball. Put him ahead, in my opinion. Put him ahead of McKinnon. Look at uh, the stats, is... bro. They don't lie. Like Drysaddle has been leaps and bounds yeah. ahead of McKinnon his whole career, and no yeah, one wants to talk about it. Just McKinnon does. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's yeah. McKinnon's it's, edge it's, work is so nuts. That's why it's like, a fun yeah. conversation to have. Because like, I almost feel like McKinnon gets underrated. He has 77 points in 56 games, and he had 65 and 48 last year. And everyone was talking about how he's consensus almost the best player in the league. Dude, there's he's having, he was better than McDavid. He's having a better else. season this year, and people are just going, eh. Oh, well. Because everyone else stepped up. Literally Maybe. everyone else stepped yeah. up. Austin Matthews is getting 60 goals this year. Conor McDavid yeah. bursting every single career high. Yeah, like they should I, just be I would, yeah. fucking counting their blessings to keep Kucherov's not 100 percent because that. I would love to see. I'd like, love to see what this year would have been like if no one got hurt because like McKinnon missed the 16 games with I think it was a knee injury or like a broken jaw mm-hmm. when he got punched, and if Kucherov was healthy because I think they could have, you could have had like potentially like 600 point or six or seven hundred points. Six hundred points in one season. Wow. For I was gonna say team. you add dumbass. As to redo it, uh, Brad Marchand's had about 15 to 20 games taken away from him this year, too. So, yeah, I that's even probably have a fuck ton of points. To six stop six game scoring. suspension and then a, an injury, I think. Yeah, and then Mitch Marner's another one where he probably has more points if he didn't miss much time. I think he's missed like 10 games this year. He's like at you know, 97 just, points right now. <laughs> Just pull Which, by the way, speaking of shattering game. career highs, he's doing all that right now. He's like, you know, shattering a career high, absolutely. Right, it actually, you know what? I probably should have changed my because I completely forgot about Jonathan Hubert also having 105 points. Yeah, right now we have. Him. Right now we have four. Matthews is hitting. That's five. Kachuk has 10 games to hit eight or get eight, and Kaprizov has 10 games to hit night. nine. That's going to be fun to see. Yeah, you really could fuck. Artemi Panarin has 89 points. Yeah, he's having a bad year. Remember. I was going to say, I thought he was having a down year. Yossi has 87. JT Miller has 86. <laughs> JT Miller slowed down and still has 86. Think about that. That's mm-hmm. insane. Kadri slowed down. He still has 83. Yeah, we knew that was going to happen, though. Like, with McKinnon coming back. Yeah, but I mean, like, he still well, has lower price for Chuck Fletcher when he goes to Oh, no. He, yeah, no, now they can squeeze him and Goudreau under the cap. Duh. <laughs> Dude, they're going to mm-hmm. add two 90-point scores. They're going to get Goudreau with 101. and They're Kodri both going to regress to 60. I love it. And they're going to add Mason Marchman. He's going to regress to six points. Six times six. Dude, this, this list is cr- – sorry. I'm, I'm the fucking, JVR I'm fanboying right now so hard. Stamkos has 80. Lindholm has 74. Man, I love it. <laughs> Matt Duchesne has 75. Joe Pavelski has 73. The man. Jason Robertson's oh, over the other game. I know There's so many – there's so many players who might hit like over uh, PPG. Mark Shifley is 70 points in 67 mm-hmm. games. Kyle Connors literally like got 45 and 45 or some shit. It's like he's got 40, 42 and 43 in 71. So he's got 85. What? Dude, Here's he just, my he, question. He uh, what happened to Nick Ehlers? Is he just a fraud now? Is he on fraud watch? No, he did. He got hurt. Long time. He got hurt. Like, oh, he got hurt. Yeah. Oh, he's he hurt. Did get hurt. Oh. He literally was yeah. out for three months. So. Oh, that's not uh, You want to talk about fantasy and injuries? I picked Kucherov fourth overall. 
Oh, yeah. I had Stone, Pacioretty, Bergeron, and Marchand, and Randon and Landis. Gone. Yeah, have you considered just drafting better? <laughs> I would simply draft. Oh, like, and Jack Hughes. So, like, pure Luke Dubois, 55 and 73, whatever, he sucks. He's a fraud. Blake Wheeler has oh, 54 and 57. Oh. What the fuck? Blake Wheeler's almost a point per game. That's terrifying to think about. But they can play defense and they suck. Kind of like oh. the Blackhawks. But remember, it's Connor Hellebuck's fault. <laughs> Morris <Yeah>. Schmidt <laughs> and Pionk have 33, 32, and 31 points. That's I love it. Poetic. And that way, None of them play defense. Please. I just love when the numbers go together. That was very oh, professional. Don't lie. <laughs> I saw for the first time since 20, 2009, 2010 that we have 350 goal scorers. Matthews, dry selling. Right we might that. get more. Probably get more, honestly. Like, yeah, because we're at 40. He's going to hit 50, and McDavid might hit 50. Dude, freaking Kaprizov and Connor might hit 50 because they're both at That's 50. That's what I was thinking. Oh. I think wow. Kaprizov's been on a wicked heater. He could probably hit 50. Well, I don't know. Well, he could probably. 45, Alex DeBrinkit so, is at 39. Unfortunately, I don't think he gets there. But like 40, like if he gets on another hot streak, like he can have 45. Literally, DeBrinkit ended the year last year with like I think 12 goals in nine games. So we know he could do it. The Brinkit special. I might have misheard you. Did you say he has 39 or 49? 39. Oh, 39. The Brinkit. That would be so freaking cool. He's been at 39 right? for like a week and a half now. I thought you said he had 49. He has a good chance to hit 45. It's like he's he donating the his to bring goals. Zach doesn't work like that. <laughs> Can I give my goals to my teammates so they win the, the rocket? Honestly. Skinner giving all his goals to Th- or Thompson? <laughs> God, like that for him. Like 60-something goals. Call that a the party in New York. The agenda would never be running better, honestly. It would never, 60. ever run better. <laughs> Oh, well, that was a great discussion on goal scoring being up. I don't even know where we started. Literally mm-hmm. every Somewhere. episode we can check in on that because it's so fascinating that there's so many players having these kind of seasons and it, like, changes so much. Like It is, it is it. nice. Dude, and it's great, too, because you'll look at players who are having bad years and you look at their stats and you're like, like, what? Bad years. Like, William Nylander's having a bad year. Literally has, like... 69 and 73. I love Willie Nylander because anytime I watch the Leafs play somebody, he's so good. And anytime the Leafs play the Sabres and I watch, he is terrible. Just like the whole team in my right. I was literally about to say, just like the whole team. It just got awful. He had like, he had a moment where he tried to clear the puck and he fanned on it. And then he just. Did he do a spinorama though? No, he didn't do the Dermot special, oh, but he just God. like said, "Fuck it, I'm out," and just didn't take his man, and he was wide open for a goal. I was like, "What are you fucking doing?" It was great though. Anyway, how was the I Owen mean, Power experience? How was that? Did he look? Owen Power? The two things I, I I found out about that: his first rookie lap was amazing because he has maybe the best hair in the NHL now. He's um, a good looking dude, and he's like, he's a good looking dude. he would be great on Tinder. Six five, <laughs> yeah. big man, good hair. Um, plays hockey. You know, he plays hockey. That's uh, a the bust, the, the two things it. about Owen Power. He's smart too. Like he went to he freaking smart. university. Like he, he's got all, man. He must be smart. Like, <laughs> he, he Kyle Dubas is like best friend. If you put a picture beside them, they actually look odd, like kind of scarily similar. I hate it, but you know Kyle Kyle Dubas, but yassified. That's Owen Power. <laughs> it's the, the Kyle yassification of Kyle Dubas. Love it. Uh, but his, his gameplay, uh, he was just – he was good. Like, uh, it was probably the best first game he could have had, minus, like, getting a goal or something. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> he a was, hat trick like he did in the World Junior. That would be really good. But uh, for, like, an, uh, an ideal first game, though, with, like, nothing crazy, he was not caught out defensively. Yeah, you just don't want him to fuck up. And he Yeah, he wasn't caught up defensively. He had the jitters. He, he tripped a couple times. But, again, he got back into the play. Um, two things I noticed the best. He broke up two two on ones really well. He defended one. It was Giordano to Matthews. Really good stick work on that one. Uh, and the other one that was just almost perfect. Um, he has this thing when he gets into the offensive zone, he likes to uh, like get into the play much more. So he like he'll always go into the slot, and then depending where the puck goes, he'll go in deep to help out, or he'll come back to the other side. And you could see it, it was so good. Him and his partner, it was like they played together for years. Anytime he went in, I played with Samuelson. Oh no, no, sorry, you played with Yoki Haru. Dalin was with oh, interesting. but yeah, it, it was uh, it was good. And funnily enough, 
it was probably the best game Yoki Haru had all season. <laughs> he, he also looked great. So maybe it just took Owen Power to charge him back up. What could have been in Chicago? Owen Power <sighs> and Yoki Haru. What, what could have been? <laughs> mm. I remember oh the Blackhawks were so close to winning the Rasmus Dahlin like, lot, like lottery. Like the ball went up and then I think it got knocked out of the way and then it was Buffalo. I it was I think it was the same thing with the Matthews one. No, wait, no, sorry. It was that the was opposite. the last year one, wasn't it? Yeah, and Toronto's ball went up and it was going to yeah, fall and then the Rangers the one knocked thing. it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was great. I was, man, could you imagine Lafreniere on Toronto? No. <sighs> With Matt, I can't. Matthews and Marner? Ew, that's disgusting. But Michael um, Bunting's better, don't you know? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, I, I read two articles today that really upset me. This is still tied to the Sabres and Yoki Haru, where they said because Buffalo has a good relationship with the Blackhawks. Good relationship. <laughs> they, they should look at trading for Patrick Kane in the offseason to hit the cap floor. And I just went, why? Why would that make sense? That don't make any sense. Why is Chewbacca <laughs> on the planet with Ewok? That don't make any sense. I just, I felt like as a Hawks podcast, you guys had to hear that because I was like, we were talking about it last time of it, like, oh, who could trade for Kane and give you all this stuff? And it's like, that's not ever happening. Buffalo might take Taves if he didn't have a no movement clause, but. That is interesting. Because uh, Buffalo, they, uh, they're they going to have a lot of cap space. Like, Fricked on, so it's possible. Would you be disappointed if Tage Thompson got traded to Chicago in a Patrick Kane uh, trade? In, in a Patrick Kane trade, no. Yeah. In a Jonathan Taves trade, absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. No, if Thompson was the main piece in a Patrick Kane trade, I could be like, okay, whatever. We have a lot of centers. I would hate to lose them. Yeah, it's like the O'Reilly trade all over again. <laughs> it's like the O'Reilly trade. Oh, he's muted. Can't hear him. I hope he's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's wagging his finger at us. It's okay. He's not going to have a good time. He's not going to have a bad time. time. Um, but yeah, it, the, the best thing, and I said this to my dad when we were watching, was like the less you notice power is probably the better tonight because he's not going to make those offensive plays. Like Darlene had a couple rushes where you're just like, that's him. And power is probably going to have the same thing. He's going to be zooming around the offensive zone. But until he gets that confidence, it's probably better to not see him and notice him a lot because it just means he's not making mistakes. Just like the less the less you see, the better, and just like Team Impala starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and they beat the Leafs, which is always great because. Uh, and they didn't let Matthew score a goal. They didn't. Let, they a they didn't let Matthew score a goal, and I think they broke Marner's point streak. And <laughs> it's it's crazy. The the Buffalo has like I think Dangle was talking about it in his LFR, where it's like the Leafs are like fifteen. Three and two against the rest of the league since March, and they're zero and three against. Yeah, the I, I, I March. saw that. Like there's three, and it's three like, locks against Buffalo. I don't get it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but I, I also love it. Craig Anderson just left in four goals to Matthews at the beginning of his career, and he just shut the door from. <laughs> <laughs> It was great too because Ma- Anderson robbed Matthews on one of the plays, and really? Matthews skidded by and said something, and Anderson just shook his head no at him. <laughs> I don't. I want to know what was said, but it was so great. Own him, oh. even at forty or forty-one years old. Own him, even even at that senile old age. He probably doesn't even remember the four goal game, but he still knows to own Matthews. Objective, <laughs> own Matthews. Objective, objective, own Matthews, and he's just like, who's Matthews? Now, who's this Austin Matthews? <laughs> oh man, but yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Uh, I'm super excited to see Power play more. Uh, I'm excited to see a lot of this draft class play more because, like you mentioned, uh, yeah, Matt 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 played for Matt Seattle, got a, a, a primary assist in his first got game. A primary oh, assist you. on the first goal against Donato or with Donato. Um, Ken Johnson just played. Uh, I want to see next year more of McTavish. You didn't get a point, but hey, Cole Sillinger got two, so that's all that yeah, matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. Sillinger's been pretty good this year. Uh, yeah, Gunther's... he has been, hasn't he? Gunther's been tearing it up in the WHL, so like, I'm really excited to see this draft class uh, like in a couple of years, see how good it is, but yeah. Yeah, except for Tyler Boucher, that top. like Yeah, that, that, one's, that one's just not happening. Would have been nice to have a pick in it, but you know. Hey, hey, you got Nolan Allen. 
That is true. Was Nolan Allen a better value pick than Absolutely. Kyle Boucher? If My Nolan power. Allen comes up and plays top six defense in any capacity, he's better than whatever Boucher brings on a bottom pair or bottom line. Scenes when Nolan Allen is playing with Seth Jones. Oh, God, could you imagine? The two big pieces from that trade. It's crazy, too, because Nolan Allen went right before Owen Zellweger went. It was the that, second pick, second pick in the second round. That hurts. Oh, all, all of it hurts. Because we talked uh, about it on the last. turns into something yeah. good, so he can just like get fucking owned. We talked about it on the last pod or last podcast about uh, the Zellweger injury. Uh, apparently, he's perfectly fine. He went that back is and watched, good to hear. He was stretched off. Uh, he had a bit of hand movement when he left, uh, but he went nothing wrong. He's uh, apparently he's good. So that, that's great to hear for him. Oh, What's, good uh, for you. Oh, God. Do you guys remember when Atsu Ratty dropped all the way to, like, the Islanders? Yeah. I mean, we... God. It, it just... It hurts. It does. Everything, everything hurts. Yeah. Oh, well. Even Colton... Like, if they picked Colton Doc at 32, I would that would have been better than... Would have been Owen better Allen. value. I feel like a giant piece of shit because, like, what has known Alan done bad? It's just like, you know, it's not your really fault. It's just yeah, stupid. it's not your I'm fault. It's literally it. just like you were not the right pick, and I'm sorry. No. Yeah. I mean, you would have been fine if we got you. You would do it. Even if they gone with, like, the second pick, like, the second round pick, I would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. It probably also hurts you because that's the only first you had. If you, uh, I know you wouldn't have had it because you got the pick swap, but like no. in some world, if you had two first and you walked away with Sillinger and him, you're like, okay, we yeah. got the center and then we got him. Exactly. But you didn't. No. I, I got that general. very much did not happen. <sighs> and yeah, that's. Did your uh, your food come, Schmitty, or are you just having like a. Oh, no, that. No, no. And they charge me for it. So now I'm literally getting my money back right now as we're speaking. Oh, I'm not good. Sure. That I'm happened not to me. For this shit. Their yeah. person didn't even try to contact me. Just fucking literally that... just sat for two seconds and left and then charged me. So I'm getting my oh, money boy. back currently. And I'm giving this person the worst Uber rating I've ever given someone in my life. So God damn. Man. I hope they really the get the fucking oh, fired because of that shit. And I'm going to take my platform to pop. Quickly talk about how fucking shitty Uber is. Thank you. God, dude. Shit. Uber we should get the podcast title just fuck Uber. No, literally, <laughs> I'm making this like make the podcast title fuck Uber, and I'm gonna tag him. I'm so fucking serious. I'm so sick of these fucking pricks. Jesus Christ. Fuck you, <sighs> Uber. Podcast link right beneath. <laughs> Love that. Literally, so, like, yeah. fuck you. Honestly, go fuck yourself. You sorry ass fucking company. Holy fucking shit. You are so goddamn lucky that everything within like a fucking radius in the city closes at like 8 o'clock. They are so fucking oh, lucky. Man. Oh my I fucking love that. God. I <laughs> love this so much. <laughs> Suck my I, can't I never, never thought I would hear this on a podcast. I'm so sorry, Shreddy. I would be pissed. Oh, I would be pissed. Oh, pissed. Yeah, That's my about, I don't know whatever the fuck we were talking about. I, I'm so, so pissed right now. Let's talk about the Blackhawks. No. <laughs> yeah, since we're since I'm already going, let's talk about that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Eight in a row now. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, is it eight in a row? Sorry, no. ass fucking team. Sorry, ass fucking team. Lost to the Sabres, Coyotes, Kraken. Name every shitty team at the bottom of the standings. They've lost to the Flyers. Like, fuck them. Like, I, they lose Arizona? I'm glad I didn't watch the fucking game last night. The yeah, only yeah, reason I'm watching the game tomorrow is because it's Pat Foley's last fucking game on broadcast. Like, such an apathetic tone towards that fucking franchise right now. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Terrible. So your last win was Blackhawks. Literally against Kings. L.A., I'm pretty sure. In a shootout. Yeah. And then, yeah, 5-4 five, five, against the – or 5-4 in OT against the Knights – Sabers collapse. Panthers. That's shutout. where they went south, I right as they gave yeah. up the three goal lead. Panthers shut out. Mm-hmm. Lightning beat you five two. Coyotes and OT. Kraken shut out. Star six four five two. I got to admit though, the Hawks have a fun schedule to end it because you end the season against the Sabers. I just realized oh, yeah? this. So have have fun when that inevitably turns out bad. Uh, but no, you guys play the Kings twice. I know you just lost. So you play the Kings once. And you play the Predators, and you play the Knights. Oh, fun! We always have a great time against the Predators. 
But like you play all three teams fine for a playoff spot. Like I just need you to beat Vegas and lose to the other two, and you guys are great. Oh, do we play Vegas again? That would be yeah. pretty neat if we beat them. Uh, Blackhawks in Nashville, oh, Blackhawks in LA, and then uh, Golden Knights in Blackhawk or in Chicago. Could be fun. Could be fun. At this point, I'm just like I don't. I don't care. I don't care. care. Like it's. I, I saw Taylor Rash really got two really points last night. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then like the other night, Kirby yeah. got two points. That's what I, I just want to see. If, like if that happens, mm-hmm. like that's how low it is for this team. If I see like a player like getting like two, a goal or like two points, I'm like, oh yeah. Honestly, that's like at this point, it's like you don't cheer for the team to win. Even just cheer for the guys to have a good night. Exactly. That's what it was like with the start of the season when uh, the Sabres were really struggling. I was like, I don't care if you guys win because you have Aaron Dell and Malcolm Subban in net. Just, you know, if Dylan Cousins gets two points. I'm Craig so Anderson just comes out of nowhere. Finally, I'll do it myself. <laughs> Finally, I'm back from – we don't even know what happened. Like, five games in, he had an injury, and everyone was like, oh, you'll be out like six games. And he came back 50 games later. And My was death like... was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, well. He's back now, and we love him. Do you think he stays in Buffalo? I think he comes back one more year. Hmm. I see. Um. Do we want to, do we want to talk about uh Ryan Hartman doing to Vander Kane? What we wish we could all do. Sure. Trimity, you're passionate about this. You you take the floor. You go for it. This is to you, what Uber. The fuck are fans giving this dude money? Like, I pray to God just because these people are so fucking stupid. I hope someone's smart enough to just make a fucking Venmo account and name himself Ryan Hartman. So it's just a <laughs> random fucking prick getting all this money from these brain dead motherfuckers. Like, I'm it's sorry. Like yeah. yeah, maybe that's harsh. Maybe that's harsh. I don't care, man. You are grown ass adults that make a living that is less than this guy, and you're giving him money. To pay a four thousand dollar fine, I don't like giving twenty. It doesn't fucking matter. I never understand giving millionaires money. They don't need your money. They already get enough of it by you watching them, by you buying products, by you going to the games. Mm-hmm. You don't need to fucking give them more. Jesus, you could just it, say that's yeah. really cool on Twitter and move on. I promise you. Yeah, I, it's, I promise you. Oh, it is just like it's, it is. Oh. It is very weird. It's like when you donate to a millionaire or a billionaire. Like you giving Elon Musk money doesn't make you look cool. It makes you look like a dumbass, <laughs> man. Makes you look like a, a fucking boot. Yeah, the person's Elon never going to remember so you. Twitter, but we donate money to you. The person's never going to. Re- it's not like fucking uh, my or Ryan Hartman's going to be like. Mm, I'm going to sign a puck for all of you. Nope, Literally. he's just walking away. He paid for his fine. He doesn't care. Might not even be on the wild at the end of this year. Like it's hilarious, man. Oh, like twice himself out and go to Christ Philadelphia God. again. Yeah, Everyone's goals. going to Philly. I can't believe it. They're gonna have the greatest line of Marchman, Goudreau, Hartman playing defense, Cadre's in goal. It doesn't matter. They're gonna put. They're gonna trade Provorov and Katerier yeah. to Chicago for Calvin DeHaan's UFA rights. So then they'll sign him and make him an alternate. Hell yeah, brother. Him and Keith. Handle. Oh, no, on the back end. Wow. What about Rista Linen? Can't oh, forget him. He's there for. He's playing everywhere. He has to play all five. He plays the one through five. He's literally talking Julius Randle. He's, 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 he's the goalie. He's the goalie. Because Carter loves that for them. Chicago in that trade as well. <laughs> it's a great trade. God, trade that, there. Yeah, that's a that's a weird thing. It just take the money you're going to give Ryan Hartman and just donate it to a charity. Please, that's, do what, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like, you're giving, do something better with your money. Like, it's fine. your money, fine, but like, come on, there's better. Put put your money to too. good use. Yeah. Like, you know, if you want to waste your money he's on not video gonna games, fuck you. he's not going to notice stupid, you. Stupid crap fuck. like I have. Go ahead, but like, just don't give your money away to give it to people. us and fund our trip to Montreal. No, Dude, okay, yeah. here's this: if you're going to give your money, give it to something at least worthwhile. Like, you could have yes. donated in his name to a charity or some shit. Yep. Which would have Absolutely. looked way better, in my opinion, because you're helping someone else, yep. not just giving a millionaire more money that he doesn't fucking need. Like, yeah. Yeah, oh, but yeah, if no, I, God, God forbid, don't let Chris Parner hear me say that, please. He doesn't need the money. Oh, God. No. Fucking whatever. Just so over it. Yeah. So, I'll just, just be, I'll just be like, send the donation. Just be like, Ryan Harmon said me here. Fuck you, Evander Kane. <laughs> oh, also, you can literally cause kids. brain damage on the ice and get nothing, but the second you flip someone off, you get the max fine. I love Real this shit? Game, I love Don't that. Don't hurt bro. my feelings. Don't hurt my feelings, but give me brain damage. Okay. I love that because like, it's, 
I think it was Dangle said that where it's like he took the di- diplomatic route and flipped them off, but if you just punch him in his face and give him a concussion, nope, perfectly fine. <laughs> diplomatic route. Uh, uh, dude, ho- hockey is one of those sports it's, that it's, it's so it's, great, it's so but it's so bad at the same time. How you like, listen, I love fighting and I don't want it to go away, but you can't tell me fighting is worse or is acceptable. And then flipping someone off isn't, or telling them, you know, the camera catches you saying "fuck off." Did you, you know, just like, flip me off? Did you just flip me off? Yeah, yeah I don't know. There's... Anyway, go Ryan Hartman for doing that because of Vander Kane's pos, and honestly, deserved way worse than yeah. that. What are you gonna do? Yeah, literally. Just, uh... No, but he just needs a second chance, guys. Come on, let's not stop being so harsh. I hope to God Edmonton overpays Evander Kane because, <clears throat> but he is having a decent. If you don't look at his like micro stats and advanced analytics, he's having a good year. He's got like I think twenty something points. I watched him score live when they were playing Minnesota. I'm pretty like, sure on a power play. It's great because if you look at all his stats, though, it's like he either scores on the power play or into an empty net, and that's it. He's terrible five v five. But hey, I saw it highlight reel. He has like five empty net goals, and it's like a Vander Kane, a true uh, artist of scoring goals, and it's like five goals in the empty net. It's like I love that. Line. Yeah. He's going to get a he's going to get massively overpaid. He's going to Philadelphia too. It's going to be the Broad Street Bullies again and uh, everyone can rejoice. Literally like Tuck Fletcher's going to trade away everyone on the team and just like it'll be like basically expansion team and he's just going to make like an expansion team of like free agents. Here's here's a good question since we're talking about the Flyers. Where does Giroux go this offseason? Ottawa. You think he goes to Ottawa? Yeah. <laughs> because no, I think no, that's not, that's not a crazy thing. Because I think he played juniors there. I think he played yeah, for the he's from the seven. area. And I've like I saw an article last season where it said that um, Claude Giroux wouldn't be a bad fit in Ottawa. And you know what? Whatever. Let's go, Team Chaos in Ottawa, baby. Let's go to Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. That's honestly a pretty fun shot. I'm not gonna lie. Dallas and just is like play with Joe Pavelski and find the So. <laughs> He's, He's gonna replace right Joe now. Pavelski. I like that. Also, no state tax. So, yeah. oh, no, he's, gonna get, he's gonna get those couple of paychecks in Florida and be like, "Wait, I like this. Mm-hmm. I like this. I like, I like being on a good team. I'm going back to Florida. I'm taking league men in Tampa. What? <laughs> I want another cup, and by another, I mean my first. I mean one. <laughs> oh, any, please, somebody, just sell me I'm your. I'm so old thirsty cup. for a cup, please. Like, my water just keeps falling all over the place. I don't have a cup to put it in. I am once again asking for you to give me a Stanley Cup. <laughs> no, go to Pittsburgh. Max Jeez. Chaos. Let's go. Oh, man. I'd love that. And then Latang signs in Philly with that, like, great team. Dude, the red. Really sh- great core in Philly, bro. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. Look at the, the core you wish you had. Latang, Goudreau, uh, Calvin DeHaan somehow. <laughs> they, got, they got everybody. Mark Andre Fleur is going to go there as a UFA too. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> they trade Carter Hart, sign Fleury, get Latang, trade Kateri. Trade Carter Hart to Seattle. Hey, Malkin's, I heard Malkin's a UFA. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. going back to KHL though. Oh, honestly. Oh, man. But yeah, that's a. Uh... That's fun. I really Ryan Hartman, Drew, but like honestly, it's a, it's a good, it's a good question. But I, I think he's just gonna go. He might stay in Florida, honestly. If uh, I mean, if they're losing Marchman, a couple guys, he might just resign cheap there. Yeah, that's true. It, it depends. I feel like it just depends on the playoff run. Like if Absolutely. they make it, far, if they get out in the first round, they'll definitely change good. their thoughts. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Well, just, I feel like there's just gonna, gonna be some team that just throws a fuck ton of money at your room. We're gonna be like, wait, what? Okay, I guess that makes And it's going to be the Buffalo Sabres like they did with Taylor Hall. It's gone, Let's dude. go! God. <laughs> he gets to and learn from a real center like Tage play. Thompson. Let's he gets go. to learn how to play center from a guy who was converted from a winger. Claude Drew gets to go oh. to the Tage Thompson school. Playing this, is a, this is the perfect segue into this because uh, the Flyers – Aren't getting cr- nearly oh, enough yeah, crap. We were, to, we were trying to talk about that earlier, and then <laughs> for how yeah. bad they've been run, like you, you go back at like what probably a decade ago in the Cup Finals when they lost to Chicago, right? Hmm. <laughs> yes, I remember over that. a decade ago was that 2009? That was 2010. Jesus, yeah, it's one of the years I don't know. 
everything's yeah. a blur. Something um, like but yeah, they had they had a couple good years, and then like they've just made every bad decision they could possibly make. They are the team that misses one year, gets the next year, misses one year, gets the next year, and that streak is being broken because they're gonna miss the playoffs two years in a row. Yay! But yeah, it's a, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> literally, so I'm so God. proud that I said that. That's like the one thing that's come true for my predictions that'll always mm-hmm. stick with me is that I said the Flyers were gonna suck this year, and so happy it was. It was a great, a great prediction because like hindsight's twenty twenty always, but like. I mean, if a couple of guys don't get hurt, it's a little different. But like, I, I was just about to say that. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. they're going to be better next year just by having Couturier and Ellis back healthy. Yeah, no, that's a Couturier and Ellis back, and they're probably going to spend on some free agents. But like, there's still the Barry decisions missed a they good make. Chunk of time this yeah. year, like, I just don't know if I trust them to make the right decisions anymore. No, well, like, are they going to go? They and got make the guy who sees money, and it's on fire. Yeah. Known as Chuck Fletcher. Yeah. Are they going to go see like Goudreau and Kadri out there? Or are they going to overpay for grit like Hartman and uh, Marchman? Like, it, I Why think not it's all the... of them. Chuck mm-hmm. Fletcher yeah. literally is the Joker, where he's like, it's not about the money. It's, it's not about money. It's, it's about. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta look this up yeah. now. Flyers cap space. Because they got so many guys locked up on like multiple year deals. They're like a lot like the Islanders, to where a lot of these guys after Surely they're a run, they got a bunch of extensions. And yeah, I don't next year's necessarily know how next movable a lot of are now. Next year's projected cap space is six point five million bucks. Wow, that's so fucking epic! Give me Travis Sanheim for a four. So here's who they have to re-sign. I mean, they're gonna let Sammy Moren go. Uh, Martin Jones probably doesn't get much. Martin Jones so, forgot he was in Philadelphia. Nick yeah, Steeler, that was gonna Kevin, fix the problem. And Nick Kevin Steeler, Connaughton, Blackhawks legend. Yeah, Keith Yandel's gone. Uh, Nate Thompson's not getting a lot. Zach McHugh and Morgan Frost and Owen Tippett are just getting really cheap uh, bridges. And Tanner, well, oh, that's a name. Tanner? Yo, or La- Tanner playing for the Flyers. You know what? Good for him. He's their best cross. Oh, he'd be better Lax- than Martin Jones. Laxinski? L-A-C-Z-Y-N-Ski. Laxinski? Laxinski? I don't know. Mike Wazinski? <laughs> Mike Wazinski? <laughs> But like you know, they're not. Uh, no one's taking Scott Lawton at three million for four more years. No one's taking Cam Atkinson at five point eight for uh, three more. Oh, man, that's another yeah, trade. Like, Cam Atkinson. Why did they you trade think him Cam for Like, I don't know. Isn't Cam Atkinson having like a terrible year this year? I think he's all right. It was not bad. It's just it's like numbering. it, it was it's such 50, like a yeah. lateral move. Yeah. I just don't. Seventy three. Uh, it's not terrible. It's just not. For a guy who's gotten 41 before in a season, yeah, that's pretty bad. I just, unless it was like a complete like culture cha- shakeup where they were like, we have to do this to try and send a message, but like it just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, dude, like they're going to trade so many guys that are just going to bounce back this offseason. Like, I'm yeah. already off the top of my head, I'm thinking Travis Sandheim, Travis Connecticut. I was like, I would have the balls off. Yeah. Um, like, I, I trade someone world, who's just yeah. gonna fucking pop. As soon any as world trade. where you're trade, you look at this team and you go, "Yeah, let's trade Sanheim, Provorov, and Kon- uh, Konechny instead of Atkinson, JVR, and Ristolainen." That's how you know they're not a good run team. Well, you can't move JVR, Atkinson. I guess you could move, and then I don't know what the JVR. Fuck I think you could move seven million for one more year. Oh, if you're half on that, you probably could. Yeah, he's got he's got twenty goals at least. It's you know. I'm not gonna lie. That's one of those where like I don't know why Seattle didn't just pay C- or Seattle didn't ask for like an extra pick just to take him or like Philly they probably didn't give did. Seattle just an extra pick to take him. They probably did. They were just asking too much. What would you they probably, give? Up? They, they must have like wanted like yeah. a first or something like the what would same. You give what would you? What would you? What would you rather do? Give up a first to keep or keep like seven million or get rid of seven million cap space or give up a first, second, third, and Robert Haig for Rasmus Ristolainen? I don't know, the guys. It's one. a tough one. Like I'm the sorry. One, In hindsight, it's they, look like like fucking idiots. they look like fucking idiots, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh. Kale McCarr just scored his twenty six. He's so disgusting. That's cool. Now watch this. Ready? Funny part. <laughs> it's six to two. Oh my god! It's six to two. It makes me six to my That's stomach. Tough. Adrian Kempe has thirty-three goals, man. He does. He's really good. 
Yeah, man. Remember when Adam Wilde said he shouldn't be at the All Star game though because he's bad. <laughs> I do. I was Stinky also like, why, should, why is Adrian? I'm pretty sure I said the same thing, but I also didn't say. It's like, why is Adrian Kempe catching the strays? My man's just trying to live. I was like, why don't you spend like even Drew Bauer? Like it's a All Star, but you know, whatever. That's like a weird hill. To die uh, honestly, on. like uh, I don't, I don't even hate the All Star game for becoming like a not a send the best player. It's just like let the guy who's having the best year go. Like that's why Kadri should have went. I think he got voted in, but like I don't care if I'm watching McKinnon. I like just send the player that's having the best season. I don't want it's not shouldn't be a personal achievement award for having a great career. The uh, uh, I was gonna say Leonardo DiCaprio's Revenant Oscar. There you go. Mm-hmm. You got there eventually. It's all that's the, yeah. That's the pinnacle of sports. It's Making the all game, not right. winning like a championship or a, a MVP award. <sighs> yeah, it's a that's a true merit. It is. That is. Yeah, that's did how you carry your team to a wild card spot. Nope. Okay, you don't deserve shit. All right, <laughs> using the Taylor Hall logic for a second. Let's go. Taylor Hall's you. Taylor, Taylor Hall's Hall. like career is just so interesting. Looking back on it, because he's, he's not bad. Never has been bad. But like he just never he hit had a couple years of first overall. <sighs> he's had like two years where he's played like it, and that's it. But I mean, shit. He's, he's one of those players. examples where like he's a really good second liner. Like, yeah, three. Four, good team, which yeah. is what he is in Boston. Uh, yeah, four, that's why he's doing so well. Mm-hmm. Fourth year in the NHL, he hit 80 points. Good for him. And then the, his heart win, he had 93. 93. Yeah. But he's never hit 40 goals once. Which is crazy because you think of Hall as a goal scorer. So it's like. Yeah, he's only had a shooting percentage above t- uh, above 12 three times. Let's talk about that Sabre shooting percentage real quick. Where was it? <laughs> 2.3, I remember that. <laughs> I remember. And then he got like four goals in Boston, and everyone was just yeah. like, it was bound to happen. Yeah, he, he ended up with 8 and 16. He shot 16.7. It was like, yeah, no, that was bound to happen. Come on. Uh, What's he got this year? Like 50, I don't know. Like 50 something points, something like that? Uh, yeah, I think it's 54. Uh, here's here. a great question. Great question regarding that, though. You go back in time. Do you still take uh, Hall first? You take Sagan now. Ooh. Like I think Taylor Hall's had maybe the two better seasons, but I think Tyler. Sagan's That's it. Yeah, I was gonna say because I think Tyler Sagan's like been like like more consistent. I like think he's been the more consistent player, and he's the centerman. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. He also has had forty goals at one point in his career. So. Tyler Sagan had forty. He had forty goals. See, Sagan had a stretch. See, Sagan had a stretch from 2013 to 2019, where he had 84, 77, 73, 72, 78, 80. Never beat Hall's uh, MVP season, but he trounces Hall's every other season. Yeah, he's just a more so, consistent player. Yeah, even 15, 69. This year, coming off hip surgery, 45 and 72. Like it's a. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I, I think, I think I might go Tyler Say. That's interesting. I think also too. I'm like, like looking at this I, draft class yeah. right now, and was Eric Brent to a number lot. three? Oh, was the, yeah, that that's was hilarious. That. Yeah, that was just um, here. Dill Macaroth went like in the top ten, I think, by New York, and they John Klingberg they was a him over. Mark Stone was a sixth round pick. Oh my god, I love that. Freddie was a seventh round pick. What a beast! Uh, what was the one I saw though? Uh, Vladimir Tarasenko went in the first round of that draft, and I feel like. The career I'm pretty sure the Blues got he would at least be a top five pick. Yeah. Brian Johansson, oh my god, remember Alexander Bermustrov? <laughs> Jeez, uh, that, talk about someone who never panned out. Look at Jared Tonorti, what a beast! Dylan Macri, <laughs> Mark Pissick, let's oh go! Oh my god, Brandon Gormley. I'm just looking at the guys who did not pan out. Brock Nelson, Islanders from Chicago. Oh, Bennett. Brett Conley, Blackhawk legend, Lightning. Oh, Rafferty. not not a not Brett Howden, Quentin Howden. Let's go. The best brother, Better Howden. <laughs> Border. As I checks career stats, has like twenty points. <laughs> some, uh, you know what? Some decent picks though, like Justin Falk in the second round, Tyler Toffoli, dude, Callie Yarncroc, Mark Stone in the sixth round, Jason Zucker, Tyler. Oh. Brad Kogudas. Johnny Hockenpah, my boy. Johnny Hockenpah. Brian Rust. 
Who the fuck is Brian Ross? You know his dance boy. Louis Domain. You know oh, Peter Morazic. Oh. Dude, literally all the fucking Leafs goalies were in this draft. You had Campbell, Morazic, me... and Freddie. You telling me Zach Hyman was drafted by the Florida Panthers? Yep. yep. Oh, he what about the greatest like pick? The, the greatest pick, 125. The Islanders, dra- uh, Islanders draft Tony DeHart. Tony DeHart? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead DeHart. of Tony D'Angelo, they got Tony DeHart. Tony DeAngelo, but nice. <laughs> you got the heart you need to win. Brendan Gallagher went in this draft. Yes, for Faust. You said Mark Jesper Stone. Faust is just that guy. Freddie Not Anderson. Not guy, just that guy. Just he's that. that guy. He like is that bitch. The yeah, bitch. Crazy. This all came up because of Taylor Hall, and I don't even remember how we got to Taylor Hall. But you know what you forgot? You forgot the Chicago Blackhawks picking Justin Hall. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> Counterpoint, I don't care. Counterpoint, he's terrible. Oh, but. <laughs> oh, contraire. I still oh, don't contraire. care. <laughs> I still don't care. I, I still love you. <laughs> you know, somewhere deep down in my heart, I still love you. Yeah. Oh, God. So, Pierce, what would you like to talk about next? Well, we talked about the Blackhawks and the Kings. We don't need to talk anymore. That Reese Johnson extension. We talked about that. We talked about Owen Power playing in the NHL along with other NCAA players. We talked about Ryan Hartman flipping the bird at uh, Vander Kane. Then we talked about the Flyers being. Shit. I would like to what bet four hundred dollars. What? You sound like a fucking uh, what are they called? Oh, yeah, an auctioneer. Yeah, I'm flipping off the Andrew Kane and getting having to pay four thousand dollars, and then the Philadelphia Flyers second because they're run by Chuck Fletcher. Anyways, now I want the Twitter question. Do I got into Twitter question? And sold to the man and blah blah blah. Let's do it. Yay, Twitter question. Right. Twitter question. Twitter question. Twitter questions. If anyone's got <laughs> some <laughs> questions, everyone that knows that you're a fucking real one. Oh my god, Trudy, that was. <laughs> Body Twitter questions. questions. Let's go. That is a throwback. Bro, like, oh, those videos used to bring me so much joy. Lunchtime with Smosh. That's right. Real ones in the middle. I used oh to always God. be fascinated with Del Taco. There's some gr- I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at this here. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at some of the questions here. There's some great fucking questions. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got I got some too that I got sent to me. So we should get started. So yeah, Pierce, just start shooting them off. Start I shitting think, them off. I think you should. St- yeah, it's Yo, like the flyers. You when and I turn to the, the Quagmire toilet. <laughs> Quagmire <laughs> toilet. I think you should start with MP. You like the episode of South Park where they just shit out of their mouths, and then let's oh, Twitter question. If we, if you put, eat food hey. in your mouth, it comes out of your ass. If you put food in your ass, that means it comes out of your mouth. <laughs> They're right. That's not possible. Try that at home, kids, please. Yeah. Anyways. You know what I mean? Try that out there. No. <laughs> um, what's, me what's me ordering part? a 12-inch sub right now. Hey, the the, the five dollar foot long. I wish they still had that. Oh god, so do I. Oh wow. Anyways, uh MP's question, how are you? Good. Tired. Hungry. Depressed. I have Tired to of to Uber shit, I bet. No, I'm fine. <laughs> He's over it now. I, I am hungry, though. <laughs> that is... Currently, I'm hungry, MP, but I'm good. I hope you are That's doing good. well, too, brother. <laughs> brother, I hope you do well. Then. Um, This is a question from some guy. His name is at Canadian Jesus 99. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but... uh, Ever heard of him? What's the, what's the, what's the best... Of course I know him. He's me. <laughs> He's what's weird. the best sport He's movie me. and what's your favorite individual sport, i.e. golf or tennis? Yeah, golf this one was more for yeah. This one was more for you two, so I want I want to know your favorite individual sport. Because like we always talk about hockey, we talk about baseball and football last stream, so I'm just curious, like, what do you guys like? I'm a really fucking good bowler, so I like bowling. That's a great answer, and I oh, and surely there there isn't a gift to ruin that. <laughs> Terrifying <laughs> bowling, bowling now hasn't gotten gift. bad marketing in the last couple months. Certainly, oh man, <laughs> bowling's a great answer. Honestly, that's that's a good one. What about you, Pierce? Ooh, I don't know, because again, I'm like very 
what's the word like single-minded i don't know because again like hockey like i've that's pretty much been the sport i've only followed but yeah, i've been trying to get into that's fair yeah been trying to get into football been trying to get some mm-hmm. baseball i saw that vladdy daddy hit some dingers earlier um that three times. golf and mm-hmm. tennis i gotta be honest i don't really know like that's no that's fair yeah um, i was just you know just what? i'll go examples. i'll go golf one just to piss MP off because tennis is not a real sport. Haha, <laughs> lol, get on. Fair enough. But, um, uh, no, I'll go golf just because Tiger Woods. He's cool. Tiger Woods. Yeah. Nice. Uh, good Good answer. I'm proud of you, Tiger. Pierce. Thanks. And the other and the one first was, part of that question was movies, right? Well, yeah, what's your favorite sports movie? Oh, dude, I think I got a top three for this one. I can't. The Mighty that. Ducks. No, actually, well, I, I always like the Mighty Ducks. I'm keeping it a bean. Like, first Mighty Ducks was goaded. The other two were... we are kind of cringe if I'm being honest to my right, fellows. Yeah. Huh, I actually cringe. don't know. I don't watch sports movies, to be honest. Dude, I really? grew up on sports movies. I watched so hey, hey, I have an answer. I have an answer. Go ahead. Go. Moneyball. Moneyball is a good See, answer. that's one of them. That's literally yeah. one of them I was going to name. I'm like, Moneyball is a great answer. I got so like, many ones I, 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 I got Moneyball. Movie. You got fucking yeah. The Blind. You got Miracle on Ice. You got... Oh, Blind Side's great, too. The replacements is really good. I love the replacements. Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Oh my gosh, I'm missing one. If we're going off a of comedy, Semi Pro is really funny because that's basketball sure. technically. Yeah. Um, oh man, uh, Angels in the Outfield's really good. If you want to throw it back, uh, Rookie of the Year is another really good one. Uh, oh, what's the Happy what's the Gilmore is fucking. Great. Oh, Happy Gilmore is like, come on. Like, I'm I, sorry. I, I, sports movies that. are my like gotta be one. Like, what's the meme where it's like shout out to sports movies? Gotta be one of my. Gotta be one of my genres. favorite uh, movie types. Gotta be movie. one of my favorite genders. <laughs> it's fucking no, but I, I literally love sports. Caddyshack's another fucking classic. Caddyshack, Caddyshack is so Caddyshack, good. Caddyshack, oh my god. Um, fuck. There's like fighting ones. Like, uh, uh, there's like bleed for this. There's Creed. Rocky, like, dude, I could literally go. I could, you could do a whole show on sports. Raging Bull. I, I, I can't Raging pick a favorite. Bull? I literally can't pick a favorite because I no, just thought that, you like know 10. what. Mm-hmm. I'm honestly just happy we had this discussion because you've brought back so many into my mind now where I'm like, I gotta go rewatch these. I haven't seen this in dude, like a decade. And this. they're all on like different streaming services too. So oh, like you could probably oh dude, fucking <laughs> Bones are gonna one too. Like there's uh, a bunch of ones that I just I, would, get I thought Pierce like, was gonna say that one. <laughs> I love Pierce to be like, I love Goon. No, 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 like that was, that was pretty rough. Like, there's some good, there's some good sports movies like Raging really Bull too. Ones. Like, I don't know if yeah. you've seen it or it. Yeah. Oh, dude, bro. we're forgetting the best ones. Yeah. All of the Air Bud movies. <laughs> 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 Fucking <laughs> Let's go. Oh man, that's my child. Yo, why didn't Air Bud play hockey though? <laughs> really God, play I know that dog could have picked up a stick. Could have done everything. I don't know if you guys were. I don't know if Space Jam, but like Space Jam? Question mark. I don't know if you guys watched. Oh, I, the OG Space Jam was great. I oh, want to watch Jam, the yeah? new one when I'm really eh. drunk with my friends because I want to make fun. Honestly, <laughs> let's watch it in Montreal together. I, I watched. Oh, literally, Space if we should sober. shit face and watch Space Jam, it'll be the funniest shit on the planet. I, I watched the second Space Jam sober. And I was like, this is this. Yeah, I need I to be twelve to watch, to watch this. Sober. That's not happening. Yeah, it that's just wasn't happening. the same. Like that's a movie that Jimmy and I are just like. Really inebriated. We were just like, you know what? We need a good laugh right now. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, turn that on. But um, yeah, oh, literally, go on sport, about sports movies all day. I love them. Yeah, literally any of those, and you're, you're doing good. So yeah, thanks for answering my question. You can go to the next one now, Pierce. Oh, uh, hang, hang on. Yeah, I was just. Uh... I got. One. Um, if the sure. Blackhawks were to oh. get the second overall pick, who would be the best player to choose? This is from Five Star Rescue yeah. Team, just Jan Stancer, aka Ben at uh, Ben Sasquatch. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I well, we talked about this last podcast, so I'll let you guys go first because I think I have my answer already, dude. Yeah, I, I would go same. honestly. I know they already have Seth Jones. I might go Simon Nemich. That's fair. I need your- I knew. I knew one of you was gonna say Nemec. He's, he's yeah. really going up the rankings. I'm 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 compiling a list together. Like I'm doing draft rankings. I have like 125 players that I just put Let's into the pool. That's like four, four rounds worth of prospects, and I got like my top ten like nailed down. And I think I got Nemec number two. That. That's probably fair. Uh, you can go now. I, I think I know who you're gonna pick. I so I'm really torn between Cooley and Slavkowski. Like two That's different. Fair. Two different, yeah. completely different play styles, but 
Mm-hmm. I really don't see how you can go wrong with either of those two. And I and I just like yeah. like I've preached on this show, they need forward prospects. Like yeah. they need forward prospects. And like a guy like mm-hmm. Cooley helps the forward center core so much. Slavkovsky mm-hmm. helps just a depleted winger that, oh, that man. the Hawks have. Imagine, and he brings something Slavkovsky that no one else in this draft brings. So that's probably where I would go with that. Imagine the future Slavkovsky with literally any setter and, and to bring it. Oh God, it'd be so much yeah. fun. Honestly, literally stroll, man. Like yeah. <laughs> Strong. Yeah, I know oh, you guys aren't resigning him, remember? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, he's kind of gone. Go- he's kind of doing what I complained about him doing a couple months ago, which is now he's turning the Danny Phantom. But, you uh, know, we're not going to talk about that. Fair enough. Uh, my answer, I think you guys nailed down the, the, the three perfect options. Uh, I think, I mean, we talked last time, you said centers. So I'm going to go with Cooley just because it's probably the, the best, the biggest impact need, need you need. Shout out to Matt yeah. Savoie, who I have number three on my list. That's another guy I consider, but he would definitely be a problem. Honestly, oh yeah, I, Matt Savoie would have been mine, but I just Savoie don't see them taking him. Yeah. I don't think they would take him because class. he's like a five nine center, but but they did know. take they did take the Brinkett, so who knows? Maybe they're one of the teams that isn't heightest. Yeah, but they <laughs> were a heightest with Doc, so we'll see. And okay, Davidson's been and kind of a heightest with this move, so fair enough. Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll accept that. If you took any of those four guys second overall, you're, you're laughing though. You're walking out of that draft fun. going, "Nice, you're gold." And also, none of those guys should see the NHL next year. No, no. Saying that with yeah. my chest, mm-hmm. none of them should. See the only guy who should see. Right, I don't care. Like it's like a Doc right. situation. And he, that means yeah. he has to go back to junior for a year. Yeah. You're going to junior for a year. Yeah. Bug. I think the only guy who, who should see the NHL is probably right because he's at that he's in the, that really crap. Even the Blackhawks, like if he goes to the Blackhawks, I'm thinking like, Ugh, I don't know, man. Like keeping him in the OHL would yeah. be the worst. Like keeping oh, him away. From I'm him. Yeah. y'all are about to get a <sighs> okay. Why is Niels DMing me about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't oh, want Chikrin. Like, is he trying to trade you Chikrin? Yeah. Dude, I just got my roster set up. Fuck off. He's like, asking, I'm he's good. asking you know what, Niels, Send him my way to Chicago. You can have he, a nice Pierce, you, have a nice he won't ask you can have a nice Jake McCabe if you no, will. No, Pierce, he's going to ask you for Capo Caco and your first. Because he asked Tanner for Brant Clark. He asked boat. Tanner for Brant Clark in a first, and he asked my Buffalo for an elite prospect. And yeah, it's it's not going good. All right. But anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, you get any Wait. of those guys? I think you're, you're laughing. Just don't. Take, don't fall for the bait and jump up and take like your sec over Nemich or take like uh, what's the other guy? Not cool. It's Kamel. Like, don't just take no, one of the guys that's, who. That's yet. funny because that's how I have like my tiers lined up. Like, obviously, Shane Wright's yeah. his own tier, and then the yeah. second tier, I got Nemich, Savoy, Cooley, and Slavkovsky. And then there's it's, and then, yeah. yeah, that's if you take anyone from that second tier, you're fine. Wow. I'm just praying one of them falls. <laughs> and, like, the thing with um, the thing with like Savoy is I like, I. I really think he's going to be like Zegers in 2019, where he's – you clearly know he's got the skill. Like, I'm sorry. Everyone knew Zegers had the most translation. skill. Besides yeah. Huge. Exactly. Yeah. Like, huge. So, like, I'm just curious who is going to take that chance. Like, man, if a New Jersey gets their hands on Savoie, that's going to be a problem. Oh, God. Yeah. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah. All good no, choices. He's going to go to then. Montreal. Because he sounds even remotely French Canadian, <laughs> even though he's born in like Winnipeg. Exactly. Yeah. Don't even. Doesn't even matter. Just don't. Don't tell that to. Yeah. Uh, you you could add a French accent to it, and it's instead of Matthew Savoie, it's he's Francophone. Oh, Savoie. good. Let's go. Like ta- like Tajay Thompson. Exactly. exactly. Tajay, I love me some Tajay. <laughs> This is kind of on the same topic, nightmare scenario. So this is from Brody, of course, at Jones Tractor. Nightmare scenario. Hawks win the lottery and get Shane Wright and then are the worst team in the league next year, and the Blue Jackets get Connor Bedard from the Seth Jones trade, officially cementing it as the worst trade of all time. Thoughts. Thoughts. Okay. Um, I'm just going to – this is me to Brody real quick. Take a chill pill. If you think like that, you're literally going to be miserable for the next two years. Yeah, don't. Think, I and this think, is coming from you. That's, no, I'm so no. fucking serious. That's coming from me. Yeah. Like you cannot yeah. think like that. You will literally not have fun with this team for the next two years. Yeah. Here's what, and what are the odds the Blackhawks win the lottery? Two. What did Ben Pope say on the show? He literally yeah. said it. You get like an 18 percent chance, dude. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. If it happens, what, it happens. Yeah. But literally, it, it, it should have happened. If it was gonna happen, it should have happened the Jack Hughes year with mm-hmm. Colorado. If, if that was yeah. how it was going to work, and let's it's be honest, how it would work. But, but yeah, 
And dude, if you, it's yeah. not like Shane Wright is like just so like light years, but like Connor Bedard's a friend, like a, a generational yeah. player, make no doubt about it. But like Shane, yeah. Shane Wright's like so Shane Wright, Wright. Yeah, Shane Wright yeah, is yeah. not like light years behind. Him. It's like, not like you're going from Ottawa better. with Brady Kachuk to potentially Jack Hughes. Exactly. You're going from a guy who's really great. It also you have to factor in you're not Arizona who is going to finish last or whatever and have the best odds to win it you're winning an auto lottery where you have like a fucking six percent chance and then you're thinking next year you're going to get worse when by all accounts you should i'm like i don't even think we're gonna have to worry about this anyway because i really don't think they're gonna win the lottery this year no yeah Pierce, like you said rip the band-aid off already i'm so <laughs> yeah shit. I, I just don't plus care yeah if you win the lottery and you think like that you're never going to enjoy seth or uh Shane you're Rick. never going to enjoy who you pick Literally, yeah, you're yeah. never going to enjoy Seth Jones. You're never going to enjoy you get with that draft because you're mm-hmm. always going to group him with Bedard if you get that pick. You can't think like that. Literally can't no. think like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah let's no, be honest. True. They're giving Columbus a top 10 pick one of these spheres. It's going to fucking, it's gonna fucking suck. It's going to... Dude, we're going to be in the draft of Montreal. It's going to sting watching whoever Columbus takes. Yeah, you better pray to God out. they pick like Kemel or Kamel or something. Like, pick just a don't boss, pick someone. Man. Like, yeah. they're going to be the team that gets to walk. Like, they're going to be the team that gets Can you imagine Savoie. Kent Johnson, Savoie, and Sillinger? Oh, my fucking God, that forward, that center court. And Adam Boquist, and Jay Bean, and Zach Rowenski still there. It's a fun time. Anyways. Um... <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. Yeah. Uh, also want to give a shout out quickly. It's now 7 2 Colorado. Who scored this time? I got McKinnon. McKinnon. Oh, he's got that's not two. Awesome. He's got two and two, oh, and McCarr Mid- has one and two. Nathan Midkinnon, if you oh, will. Midkinnon, am I right? Connor McSecondary assist and Nathan Midkinnon. Co- Connor McPower play stat patter, am I right? Uh, Austin Fraud 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 stat Fraud pad. Fraud like, Fraud man, what's next? Yeah. Mitz views. Like, what, what's next, guys? What's next? Mid- come on, Fuse. come on. We we need the next round of jokes. Leon <laughs> Midsidel. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, 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 in, in the off chance that ever happens though, where you guys pick right and then it gets Bedard, you just you just go well. well it's the odds were not in our favor. It's just <laughs> don't tell no, me the odds, do. please. And we've talked about this too, Pierce. Yeah. Like if that happens, you gotta think. And we said this with Ben Poe too. Like the front office yeah. is gonna change their plan for one yeah. season, Absolutely. just to ensure they're not going to be bad Absolutely. enough to where that pick's close. Like yeah, if, probably, yeah, if that's the case, they're probably gonna go move for a goalie this offseason. And they're not like, trading Kane and Murphy or yeah, Pays. They're probably you know? not gonna trade Patrick Kane if, if they get if like you do that, here's this. Yeah. If they get Shane right, you don't trade Patrick Kane. I am on that yeah. hill entirely. Like you let yeah, him play out his contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, just Shane Wright's that good. He's probably gonna be in the NHL next year. He's probably gonna be a decent. Well, I see, there's a yeah. part of me that there's a part of me that thinks like maybe just keep him in the OHL for. But like he's been in he's at exceptional status. He played in the yeah. OHL. Like he's clearly it's, right. yeah. Him it's seems all you gotta do. Like you don't have to exactly. give him the whole time. Just give yeah. him his trial. It, and it's one of those things to too. If he looks bad in the nine games, you go whatever. You send him back. Yeah. It's almost like the Marner situation in Toronto, and like they've had with other players. Do you get anything by sending him back? Does he do you do you learn anything going there besides picking up bad habits because you're a 19 year old destroying 20 and 16 year olds? That's why, like, there's gotta there's they gotta lower the age for players. They, you they have to. Just, they should just let any. They should just let junior players play in the HL. Like, if the team yeah. has the option, like, wants them to play there, it absolutely has to change. Sorry, I sorry. It, yeah. absolutely, right. it, absolutely, it absolutely has to change from 20 to 19. Yeah. Like, if you want to make them go back for one year, it's one thing. They cannot go back for two years. There's too many no, guys. It should be 18, but the thing – th- it should be 18, but the thing is it should be the GM's decision because, yeah. like, if they feel mm-hmm. that they're, they're like, yeah. uh, like good for junior and, like, not good enough for the HO – or, or mm-hmm. like, good enough for the – but not good enough for go. the HO, so, like, the yeah. HO is kind of that yeah. middle place, then mm-hmm. I would do that. They they should have agreements in place with all of the leagues, whether it's the SHL, the Elfsvenson, the Liga, maybe not the KHL. Well, I think you can do it with Europe them. leagues because, like, I think if you're a first round pick and you sign them, then they can play in the HL. Because I'm there, pretty sure there are, more there are certain things you can do, but COVID also kind of changed some of them. But what I was going to say was you should just have the agreements with every league, including the AHL or the NCAA or whatever, and it should just be – the, the GM and the player can decide whatever best suits them. Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't have them stuck behind a two-year waiting gap in the OHL because the OHL wants to make money. That's it, It's a developmental league. It is not for revenue. I'm sorry. You're not making a lot of money out of there. Just let the, don't screw the kids over for that. You're already not paying them as much as you should be. So, like, just 
grow up. And like another another thing that doesn't get talked about, like with dra- drafting, like NHL teams have like a lot of power over junior teams because like if they because just because like picking players from that team, it's like oh if you don't like do like develop this guy perfectly, we're not picking from your team because a lot of these teams want their players to be picked high by these teams that make the NHL, obviously. So that's a, that's a thing favorite. that kind of take into consideration. Oh man, that's like one of my favorite things. I, I hit it blank, but like, oh, it's so funny. It's just so funny sometimes. Um, mm, there's a couple other questions. I fucking, I didn't even know Q was back on Twitter. Why is Jimmy so small? And freaking Jimmy's not even here. So, right. Um, I got a couple questions. Uh, from oh, your game. brother asked the question. I come. Yeah. Hey, there we go. What did, what did Brian say? Uh yeah, talk. Duh, he literally he's like yeah, talk about how hockey is different than every other sport with their contracts. Randy played one game for the Kraken, and that counts as a whole year. Can you explain the pros and cons of this compared to how baseball develops their prospects and play money games? Yeah, I don't understand why that is. Like at the beginning of the season, like if a prospect doesn't play nine games, then uh, like we, we we've talked about it with Lucas Reichel the past like month or so. Like if he doesn't play nine games. Then he doesn't burn the entry level, like the first year's entry level contract. It should be the same thing for Matthew Benares. Like if he doesn't play nine games or whatever, there's, yeah. There's a really weird rule because it's, it's the same for the Sabers with power as well. That if the player comes out of the NCAA and they're age nineteen, it doesn't burn a year. But because of COVID, uh, Benares and Power are technically coming out as age twenty year olds. That's what the NCAA is calling. Oh, are they late, are they late to, 2002 birthdays. Yeah. I, I know, I know so. Powers. I don't. I forgot about Ben Years. So they're counting them yeah. as twenty-year-olds. Oh, the way, that's, that's dumb. It like, is. And now the NHL teams, if they sign them, it automatically burns a year because they were saying like, should Buffalo wait and only play them in nine games? And then they said it doesn't matter. And it goes with any prospect you sign. So like, I believe Nick Abrzije, Abrzije, whatever it is. Yeah, he's he doesn't matter. He's on Toronto. Ben so Myers is going to get a year yeah. burned off his deal. He just signed today. Like it's if, just the uh, way yeah. college signings go. Yep. Quinn Hughes had a had a year off his signing. He signed. He's, he played five games one year. Yep. That's all. He, uh, yeah. Trevor Zegers, I think, burned a year. I think like, New Jersey would do the same if it was Luke Hughes too. It's just one of those things, and like. It sucks, but at the same time, you're not going to not sign a guy because of it. The best yeah. you can do is do what I think Vegas is doing with uh, Brizon. Don't sign him. Sign I think him I to eight. Boston did the same with John Beecher. Who Maybe was also on Michigan. If you, yeah. and if you sign him to AHL yeah, if you sign him to an yeah. ATO, they can go play for your AHL team because uh, I think I said earlier Brizon scored his first goal for Henderson, uh, and it doesn't count. And they can sign him in the offseason. He won't. Fraud. Play. No. But, like, uh, Owen Power and Kent Johnson, they're not doing that. They want to play hockey. <laughs> They'll just threaten to go back. And then you say, okay, you're playing. Exactly. And, like, I yeah. I get where Brian's coming from with, like, comparing mm-hmm. it to other sports like baseball and whatnot. But I just feel like mm-hmm. their development trajectories are so different in the way this league has mm-hmm. transitioned the last decade yeah. in terms of the ceiling has – you players hit yeah. your ceiling at a younger age now. It's just the way it and, is. Yeah, it's like, what, 24 and not, like, 24. Yeah. 24 yeah. Yeah. It used to yeah. be, like, 27. Yeah. It's 24 now. Play, mm-hmm. Players hit their ceiling earlier, and they hit their, their floors when they're Fast. drafted are much higher. Like, yeah. when you draft a first overall pick – They've been playing for the last two decades, but sometimes you're drafting a 11th overall pick with Cole Sillinger and he's ready to play. Shut up! Shut up! It, I'm just, I'm sorry. No, I'm but saying. or yeah, it's just, like, it is, you know. Yeah, no, but like the development curves, they don't change. It's like, yeah, there's still players that take three to four years to get into the league and their first round picks. Absolutely, it's just the way development is in the sport. And yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. it just seems different because of the way and how quick some of these guys have developed. Like, yeah, like you said, Veneers mm-hmm. and Power are technically 20 year olds, but they have only had mm-hmm. like one or two years in college. Um, yeah. they're gonna have like they've gained enough through like I, I just feel like the development process has gotten so much better over the last mm-hmm. 20 or so years than we yeah, know so much more now than volume, we did 20 years like- ago. The, That's the, cool the thing about yeah. you can cool you can basically is, project where you like you can only you, you can only project so much of where a player is going to be in a couple years. But <laughs> if they're already showing these certain signs, or like you said, Jacob, like if the floor is already where it is now, they're going to be fine. And like yeah, that, and, and like yeah. At the end of the day, I get he's pissed. Veneers is going to burn a year yeah. off his deal, but Brian, they got mm-hmm. thirty million cap space when Veneer needs to new. 
when Veneers needs a new contract, they can give him the money. Mm. That's not going to be the problem. And trust me, if the kid's yeah. good enough, it's not going to fucking matter. And guess the, what? He's looked yeah. pretty good in this first game. So The issue also Mario becomes with the NHL where, like, some guys have different things they can do. So, like, with Mason McTavish, played his nine games, he went back, he doesn't get to burn a year. NCAA is really fickle, and some people know more than others. Um, players can just leave after four years. They can just say, I'm signing somewhere else. Yep. You, Adam uh, Fox. Buffalo's Buffalo's doing it right now with Eric Portillo. He's going back for his last year, and if when he comes out of that, he doesn't want to sign a Buffalo. Jack McBain did that with Minnesota. Absolutely, he didn't want to sign there unless they gave him what he wanted. Teams will do that, so you you kind of have to appease these NCAA guys. So if they want to come in and burn a year, you let them burn the year. It is just what it is, and it sucks. But you know, it is an interesting thing though. He mentioned with baseball because they do a lot of time manipulation there, Pierce. I don't. You probably don't know as much about this as no. maybe Schmitty do, but uh, there's I. certain things you can do where if you don't call up a guy for like the first, I want to say it's like month and a half. I think it's like something like that. It they don't go to arbitration as quickly and but baseball is so complicated with that stuff where you manipulate playtime, but Basically, I don't think it's the it's same. also the sport where a guy could have a good rookie year like Wander Franco and they locked him up on a 13 year deal, which is by the way under market value mm-hmm. now because he was that good. That's the kind of sport where you could do something and, like that. Yeah. And which, it's a 13 year deal where uh you can't do that in hockey because the max is eight. Nope. So and baseball is ten years ago. But not you, at yeah. the end of the day, you just really like. There's things I really like about NHL contracts. One, the fact that they're fully guaranteed. That's mm-hmm. better than half of the sports in this in this world. Like, yep. I'm sorry, NFL, well, you can get cut tomorrow yeah. if you sign eight. Like, yeah, you get your guaranteed money, but anything that's not guaranteed, you're like. Your that's why I'm sorry with like NFL contracts and stuff. Everyone just needs to look at the guaranteed money. That's what the contract mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Like this guy signed a hundred and fifty million dollar contract. Yeah. Uh, it's eighty million guaranteed. That's and yeah, the, the great one with what Schmitty just said was uh, was the perfect example is Von Miller this offseason signed a, a six year like it came out to like 30 a year or something. Uh, but when you look at it, he only gets like 17 a year and uh, it's only guaranteed up until the third year and then he's cuttable. And it's like, just just look at that. Don't look at the big number in football. Look at the actual inside stuff. But I, I, every sport has different things. Like baseball can manipulate your time. Hockey can kind of, but then the player can leave after four years. NBA's got the yeah. highest, or the star has all fucking control, which is the star. Than yeah, the sport. The NFL star is starting gets, to get that way too, yeah. to an extent. But <laughs> NBA, you could literally group with the star and you're a super team. It's just like just because of the way the rosters yeah. are built and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, NBA is also so weird too because it's a five man team basically. In football, it is like fifty guys, and even if you have the three best, you might not win because your defense can't do anything. But in yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, so it's it, there's so much different stuff about different sports where like you, it's hard to directly compare an NCAA double or NCAA guy coming out of college for hockey to Vladdy Guerrero Jr. two years ago when he wasn't called up right away because they wanted to manipulate his time. It's just it's it's so different. Everything has their own little quirks for that. But. Yep. Yeah. You're right. It's, it's just mm-hmm. uh, it's just a process, and yeah. contracts are stupid, and they don't make sense in any of these sports. At the end of the day, yeah, That's the cap space isn't right. real in half these sports. Cap space is not Vegas, real. Vegas, why I think Vegas is actually be implemented. It's like Daryl Sutter said, said today, Vegas is the best team in the league because they're twenty million over the cap, and everyone's crying about it. But it's like it's it's true. They are right up against the cap, and they still have like twenty million on IR, and it's just it is, it is what it is. And it's fine too because the teams and like it's going to work out because the teams that can't hit the cap floor, the teams that are going to have much cap space, they're going to be able to do whatever the fuck they want this off season. Like I think mm-hmm. I've told Pierce many times, all eyes are going to be on Seattle this off season because they Absolutely. can take contracts off of contender salaries. I can't wait until. Stadiums. I can't wait until Philly dumps JVR for a first in Seattle this year. <laughs> You're late for one year. Um, JVR, holy another shit! JVR gets thirty-five football. goals. Because Jeez, that's like getting rid of uh, Brian Bickle with table two lining. Uh, <laughs> oh, gee, who would have done something like that, Pierce? That's know. crazy. Not my GM um, and do other worse things. Back, back to what Schmidt said though about football. Football is so quirky though, because like with the uh, guaranteed contracts or guaranteed money, but then you can also restructure. Like every off season, it seems like there's like five guys on a team that restructure, and you go from no cap space to fifteen. It's like, oh, there we go. Cap space isn't real. Like yeah. I said, cap space is not I, fucking I, yeah. real at all. Honestly, Money is not yeah. real. With with Beniers though, too, I think it's cool. You know what? Um, if he gets to free or to uh, getting actually paid a year earlier, it shouldn't matter. 
however the contracts should work, fans should never matter. Or it shouldn't matter to fans too much. You're not paying for the player out of your pocket. You're helping fund the team a bit. But just enjoy the on ice product, man. If Beniers is there and you get more enjoyment out of him playing as opposed to him sitting for two years so it's cheaper, just don't just don't complain, man. Just it's enjoy it. It's worth it. It's worth it to have at least a marketable young star on your roster every night. <laughs> someone that Here's the fans can look at and say, "This is the future." You need someone you can like make that. the you, future. you can make the joke now. You ate to see it in Colorado. I just, oh, I, that's what I was laughing at. Did Nick Robinson get the hat trick? Uh, the real question. Uh, no, Nishushkin got the goal. Oh, that bum. Boo, boo. He is better than Drysaddle. That is a good point. A very good um, point. What's the next question? I got a couple. I think uh, there's one more here. Somebody asking about it to the Hawks offer sheet Brandon Hagel. Oh, oh, that's tape. Um, do the Blackhawks offer sheet Brandon Hagel in three years to reclaim our king? No. no. Yeah, I just sorry. I love I love Brandon Hagel. It sucks that he's gone because like you can mm-hmm. tell the amount of effort he brought to this team, and like without him now, like it's gone mm-hmm. way down. But no. You can get guys like Hagel probably cheaper in free agency than you would have. Like he's talking in the next one. He says, I can see the possibility because uh, they have to re sign Sorelli, Sergeant. Yeah, uh, but Tampa can cool. keep all of them uh, because the no Hawk- one has the balls yeah. to one offer sheet them and Tampa Bay yeah. gets everything good. So, But then he goes to saying that if the Hawks offer $5 million, it's like, I think $5 million is a first. <laughs> first Are you round? really going to give a. No, sorry. Hey, Are you why give am I giving a first, first round, round for- Yeah, it's if it's you're not ready to win. And he's not locked up like he is now. You you don't give up that kind of capital to get Hagel back. You sign another player in free agency, and you hope he brings three quarters of what Hagel does for one fifth the price, and that's it. Dude, Taylor Radish, no, like no man, offense to Tate, been... but like this is the same problem Blackhawks fans have had for the last decade. They can't get rid of the past. We need to move on. We need to stop bringing guys back for a second stint. When has that ever fucking worked? There's literally like five fucking names I can think of off the top of my head that made a second like stint with the Hawks and got worse every single time. Why do you want to get a guy after he's had three more years on his career? Probably so more games because yeah. he's gonna play playoff games. Harder miles. So you're telling like, me they dude, shouldn't, I, I they get shouldn't get it. bring I get it. back Saw like, this offseason? Off it's, just, it's, not <laughs> it's uh, night two. They ruined the choke. McKinnon. God, McKinnon hat trick. Bro, Wally I feel so. Because the Kings did that stupid thing where they made fun of the bean yesterday. And yeah. Wally was like, you know, last time someone did this, it was the Cardinals. And they missed a bunch, lost a bunch of games and missed the playoffs. And literally the next game, the Kings get Damn, a Damn, him, bounced. Wally. God, dude, McKinnon, I, I just feel justified when I said McKinnon's still like a great player. <laughs> He's third overall, and then he gets five points in one game. Let's go. My stat padding king. McKinnon. Uh, so Can we yeah. to get 10 goals in 10 playoff games and yeah. his team to get exit in the if, second if round If you were going to offer sheet somebody from Tampa, like you just mentioned Sorelli, Sergachev, and Colton, you do one of them. Not Colton. You, sir, you offer sheet Sorelli mm. or Sergachev. Imagine me, Sergeyev and Jones. Me thinking Sergeyev and Jones. That's not like bad. that's that is that is way smarter. You give up your first, second, and third for Sergeyev than a first for Brandon Hagel any day of the week. You know, like the thing is, like I think GM should offer sheet more, but like mm-hmm. when you're uh-huh. Chicago and you're not going to be good for another five years, you don't do that. No, yeah, you don't even think about it. At least it's in three years. Like it's not. You have the, this offseason's pick, so it's right, and then next year's just Bedard, and then next year's Kivy Hardy, so it'll be the first. And then next year's going to be that guy we talked about in 2025. Oh, you're right. It'll be, it'll be, <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. Don't do it. Don't get yeah, rid of Michael Massa. Nope. So, uh, yeah. I that's, believe uh, like, just born in 2007 is going to be a future Blackhawk I soon. love that. Uh, Shemini, what were your questions? Or your questions you had? Uh, Yeah, so my buddy Nick's got a couple questions. Um, yeah, of course. Hello, he was saying like a dark horse pick for the playoffs and it kind of goes into his second question because he says what key injuries will play a huge part in the round one series and literally if vegas is healthy they are going to trounce whoever they play in round one i'm sorry like so they're going to be able to ice a fucking hundred million dollar roster yeah it's Colorado like like i just mentioned with what daryl sutter said mm, if they get colorado in that, that last wild game. card spot i don't know if they can beat colorado dude they're gonna jump la play. that's what's gonna yeah. happen but they're they're play play Edmonton, Edmonton, they'll Edmonton, play Edmonton. Oh, Edmonton's getting fist. Yeah. They're getting it's not even close. Yeah. So far. Unless Robin Leonard's like, like sub 800, which I, he won't. Yeah. So they're good. Like, um, I, So yeah. what was the first part of that, though? If you have a dark horse for the playoffs? Yeah, dark horse pick. 
Mine's Boston still. I've been saying yeah, Boston. Boston. Like, Boston's, uh, Boston's probably a good one. Uh, the only other one I could think of is like maybe Pittsburgh. I have a dark horse. This might not be popular because we're a Black Ops podcast. The Blues. It's a good one. If they can get goaltending, yeah. even goal they, tending, yeah, they might they're, they're going to need Billy Huso to step up. Yeah. Them. Just like stand on his head, and I just don't know if he can sustain that. Well, the thing is, like, they don't really like they're a good enough team where they don't need a goalie to stat. Like, even when the Blues won the cup, Bennington wasn't amazing. Like, he had a below 920 saver. Like, if you just yeah. need have a goalie that can make the timely save, like, they have, I think, 720 goal scores, and they're good defensively. Like, that could be mm-hmm. a dark horse team. I no, I agree with exactly. you there. And I think, and I think they could take Minnesota out in round one. Because that's probably who Minnesota is a really tough one because I, I Blackhawks podcast. I know you guys love Flurry. He has been terrible. Oh, that's our that's our dream scenario. We want Minnesota to go far to the, at least to the conference yeah. final. He's just not been great. Yeah, but so. but then again, playoff flower is a completely different mm-hmm. animal. So that's going to be fun. No, Flurry's been great on Minnesota. I think they have the potential to goalie much. someone in round one, and that's all they need. I didn't. He just give up like four right. goals on twenty shots to LA, like. I saw he has like a 925 in like six or seven games there. Does he have a 925? Yeah, he's, he's had a shutout already in many two, so. Hold yeah. on, I got to double check this because I, I thought he was doing terrible. He's definitely over a 920 since he's gone he's, there. He's played like uh, six or seven games. Right. But yeah, I think Minnesota. The, the Bruins oh, yeah, he's Bruins. got a 926 in five games. You're right. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's four and one. Okay, I think actually, he's been playing good. That's, that's I'm great. So glad yeah. he's playing on a team that can freaking play defense and actually get support for him. Yeah, that 926 is only two points off of his Vezina year when he had a 928. So I'm saying he Flyer gets the repeat. Shesterkin who? Huh. Yeah, if he was there Mid- the whole year. Midsterkin, am I right? Midsterkin. Midgore, Mid Midsterkin. That's okay. Now you're reaching a little bit. <laughs> you're reaching a little bit there, love. Um Okay, yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think St. Louis. No, but in each I conference, I have the Blues and the Bruins. I think I have the the, the Penguins, and I the Flames would not be a dark horse. Uh, go with Nashville. Hmm? I think if I think, I think if Nashville gets, I think if Nashville gets Calgary in round one, I think they could beat them. Yeah, which Calgary's got to prove they can actually win a playoff. Which round. will get me hung because of where I live, but oh well, go Saros. Yeah. Finnish king over a Swedish king any day. Talk to him. Let you know, English um, king. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so what, yeah. what, what else you got there? Um. So, yeah, and then we hit, there was a question about, um, like, what key injuries will play a huge part in round one. I definitely wanted to mention mm-hmm. Vegas right out the shoot. Just, yeah. Because the amount of guys I have on IR. Another big one that's already affecting right now, Drew Doughty being out for the rest of the year, is Ooh, killing yeah, me. Yeah, oh, Aaron that. Eckblad, bro. If Aaron Eckblad yeah, is back in one, 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 Florida's yeah. going to be a wagon. But if Aaron Eckblad's not back, Florida's going to have some problems. I, I, think it's last gonna, last year. I think it's going to be interesting, though. It's how these players come back to – it's yeah, like if if, if Aaron Eckblad comes back and he's not Aaron Eckblad, like he's just rushing back. Sure, he's better than the sixth guy he's replacing, but you're still missing Aaron Eckblad. Exactly. So and that's uh, the problem. Yeah. Uh, Drew Doughty's a good one. I don't think. I don't think there's, I can't any, think of there's not many major injuries it. I can think of the top of my head. Like yeah, like, like Eckblad Doughty. Yeah. Like the one uh, I'm, I'm going through my head right now. Uh, Hampus Lindholm, if he can come back for Boston, that's going to be huge. I know yep. he got banged up a couple nights ago. Um, for sure, I'm missing like two more people, and I just did um, not come up. This is this is a fun one because we mentioned it earlier. If Kucherov is 100 percent healthy for the playoffs, we know what yeah, he is in the playoffs. That's that yeah. like that's 17th. I'm not needed. worried about Tampa Bay even if <laughs> if, like, if, if he comes if he is 100 percent healthy come playoff. Tampa is still Tampa. I don't care if what's Ooh. different. It's still Tampa. I got mine. I got another one. Jack Campbell, man. If Jack Campbell's 100% ready to go come round oh, one, that's huge for Toronto. Because if he's not ready to go, they're fucked. They're Absolutely. fucked. Mrazic, baby. No, no it's no. not even Mrazic. He's done for you. Oh, yeah. Dude, they're going to be about to play Shulgren. Dude, God. I'm sorry. Them not trading for Florida looks better and better by the day. Like, for the Hawks, at least. Like, yeah. should have given us Matthew Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now um, you won't even sign Matthew Nice. How God. looks good on you, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Cal Davidson literally ruined Matthew Nice's development because he's going to be shitting himself every time he goes back to Minnesota for a year because, like, all those Lee fans aiming. Kyle, Kyle Davidson's such a king. Best, best Kyle D in the league. Oh, you um, but yeah, the, the best only Kyle good D one. in the league. Oh, oh honestly. I'm trying to think. Like I think Malkin and Crosby are both healthy now, so that's I think is Latang out for Pittsburgh? No, I think he's good. 
Okay, then, yeah. Um, I, I can't if if he that. is, then it's not a very long time. Mm. Malkin is time. out for suspension. Well, okay, no, I got another one too. I got another one because they've been banged up all year. Because let's, I'm gonna be honest, and I like uh, Connor can attest to this because he's a fan of them. Dude, Washington's healthy right now, and they're looking like a wagon. Like, yeah, Dude, they, they might, they're, they're, they're finally a hundred percent healthy, yeah. and their top yeah. nine can roll the way the top nine was meant to be made. And guys like Panther are cooking. Yeah. Oshie's heating up. Backstrom's heating up. Johansson's yeah. been a great pickup for them. Dude, my only, thing. I was going to say, that's my only issue with Washington is I don't think I trust either goaltender farther than I can throw them right now. No, but, like, man, uh, if they get some goaltending, that – Oh, yeah. I feel, be I feel if they match up against the Rangers in round one, like, that's a good series for them. I think they whoever finishes TV, third yeah. in the Metro really and plays the Rangers kind of matches up well with them. I think Pittsburgh and Washington are both teams that could beat them. And that kind of is worrying because that's the two teams you're going to play. Because you're just a... shirking, like if he if he's not at a hundred percent, like I yeah. think we can both those teams can beat him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, out out west, the easy ones, Vegas, like Schmidt said. It, it comes down to how healthy. Snow Dude, they have seven guys on LTIR right now. That's like, so yeah. stupid. Like it's yeah. so stupid. But it, but like even their stars are back though. But it's like how healthy really is Stone? How healthy is Leonard? Is Eichel a hundred percent in you know, and it's not just a hundred. Do they know what are they healthy enough to hit that next gear? Because everyone's going beyond a hundred rate right, when you get the playoffs. So if you could just hit a hundred, you're still blacking. And it that's just gonna be the issue with Vegas. And my thing with Stone too is like he doesn't even need to have the offense out to shoot. If he could just be no, defensively he just has to, sound for but, Vegas, that's gonna help them so and much. And here here's the crazy thing with Stone though, his defense is terrible this year. All he can do is do offense. His oh, everything. Disregard what I just said. He needs to fucking and, buck up and get a hundred. Like he's everything <laughs> an, analytically about Stone has fallen off a cliff defensively. Ooh, Niels was talking about in the group that. chat today. It's Ooh. one of the one of the good thing comments he made was like, "Yeah, Stone this year is <laughs> good comments." Made, since yeah. since his back issues, his defense has plummeted, and it's it's if he can't score because of a wrist man. injury, he can Oh, PK Subban. Great, no, just, great. Every time I hear a back the, injury, like that's just not great pick for the have... potential uh, dark horse, the New Jersey Devils. Gonna make the playoffs in three years. Better watch With out. their Absolutely. 800 goaltending, sub 900 goaltending. Nah, don't disrespect Nico Dodds like that. He's a king. That's right. Bro, Come honestly, right Nico Dodds is the man. I literally give him so much credit for what he's dealing with right now. Just like, holy fuck, man. What a. That's, yeah. Just, Tire fire of a situation. Yeah. They're worse than Chicago is, but they have good. their first round pick. So, yeah, but look what happens when you trade yeah. for an elite. Def- like, at least I'm not even gonna say it. All right, Jones hey, is better than Hamilton. Yeah, here we, there it is. He's Phillip, like, Phillip the no scored. It's nine three. Oh, it's coming oh, back. Yeah. It's coming. Home. It's gonna be like nine to five, like the Oilers uh, Flames game was. Just living. like, just like yeah. the shift I work. Oh, call <laughs> you uh, Dolly Parton because you're working that nine to five. Damn. Talk to him. Um, You're lucky I'm not and then, screaming at you for calling me a woman. <laughs> Fucking Mark. Why? Mark loves women. Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> Mark loves. If you ever meet a man named Mark from Virginia, he loves women and French people so much. <laughs> so you much. Like, like, literally, literally, French literally, a French woman. Yeah. If, you love, if you're a French woman, you're go up and give like him a hug. Swimwear. Yeah. Just, you're good. You're in there like swimwear. He's like, never going to watch this. He won't know what's going on. Yeah, so what's your last exactly. question or your next question, whatever? Uh, Nick wants to know, like, what up-and-coming players you should watch out for or he should watch out for. I know we brought up Owen Power, Matty Veneers, and Ken Johnson. Like, all those guys who just mm-hmm. signed out of college. No one else. Stop. In terms of guys who aren't in the NHL yet that could translate, like, in the next uh, Mason season McTavish. or so, I, Mason McTavish is going to be a stud. I was immediately yep. thinking Simon Edmondson, if he could – Luke Hughes. transition yep. next year would probably be a good defenseman. Um, um, Alex Holtz on New Jersey. Yeah, Willie Mack I can't wait to be back next year. Can't wait Dude, to Marco see Rossi him. is not playing in the NHL right now. Rossi and Boldy Rossi. are going to be such a good tandem in the – And they're in a the division. I hate it. I hate it. I hate oh. it. Pierce, you're just hurting yourself over there right now. Oh, you know, no, Pierce, boy, you're just, you're put down the knife. It's okay. <laughs> put down the knife. You can talk with the pockets out. <laughs> um – Oh, uh, the undisputed Calder winner next year. Watch out for Jack Quinn. Uh, Jack yeah, be yeah, better year. than Mark Ross. Mark Ross. Uh, he actually has. I mean, he honestly, has... in terms of guys in the league who aren't getting enough credit, Anton Lindell has been fucking amazing this year, and no one talks about that enough. 
especially I, for like, yeah, his defensive game. I feel bad for Lundell because he's having that year where like Cedar or Cider should win the the Calder, obviously. Yeah. And then second, no, and Michael third, Bunting. What are you going on about? Second, the guy who hasn't had a goal in twenty. Anti Toronto. It's like Zegers should be second, and Raymond should be third, and then there's Bunting because he's ninety eight years old, and then there's Lundell, really? and it's like he just barely misses out on that. He's going to be great. Zegers, obviously. Drysdale's another good one. Um, oh, the two on the Kings. Watch out for Byfield and Clark. Dude, Brand Clark's going to be Any young Brand player Clark. on LA. Like, it's, yeah. No um, you could fair. almost go through every team and just pick somebody. Like, besides, like, the Bruins in Tampa who just lack a top prospect, every team almost has somebody who's, like, going to be good. I yeah. thought I mentioned Chicago to be nice to you guys. Oh, yeah, I don't care. You. Anyways, um, <laughs> no, let's just drive. <laughs> oh, uh, Alex Newhook, he's gonna be so good. Yeah, he's gonna be good. Bowen Byram's still oh, not even caught. Hit his yeah, it, it depends yet. how it depends how uh, far you want to go into it. Because like, if you're ta- counting like guys coming up potentially next year, like well, Shane Wright's gonna be disgusting. I'm really, I'm really looking forward for Shane Wright to be a Chicago. Shane player, Wright, <laughs> you have four guys in the next three years who like could potentially be like game breakers. Shane Wright, both of Bedard and Mitchkov, and Kivy Haru for like the next year. The All disrespect to Cole Caulfield. <sighs> who I've never heard of this man. Uh, no one on Montreal I've is gonna be good. Oh. Talking about Montreal, watch out for uh, literally nobody. Maybe Carey Price. Um, maybe um, maybe um, Carey um, Price when oh he comes my back. Fucking God. Oh, um, I'm trying to think, is there any goalies that are going to make the jump next year? Uh, obviously, if Dryden yeah, McKay signs in, it'll be interesting just because he was literally the Hobie yep. winner this year. But um, um yeah, young goaltending wise, I think Wallstead, Kosa are probably the two big ones. And then you look at guys like maybe Devin, Devin, Devin Levi. Mm-hmm. Just won like every award but the Hobie Baker because and Luke and Meso, baby. y'all literally have yeah. him and Portillo. Shit's hilarious. And UPL, greatest names in the league. And Time Craig, to get the don't you forget that. Try to be a good we're gonna, tra- we're gonna trade you guys Portillo for uh, fuck, I don't know, just name a random prospect you guys don't want anymore. We'll um, take Dylan Strom. Oh hell yeah, brother, let's go. The trade we're give you a nice and Brett Conley. <laughs> We'll probably take the cap dump. We're that. And we'll have Kevin Weeks' right announcement on. from the from outer space on the moon. He'll be taking a fat dump, just going like this trade. I'm taking a shit, and I can't wait for that. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, like you just said, Luke Hughes, Beniers is the easy one. Ackland, uh, really yeah. insert like any top fifteen pick. <laughs> Honestly, you could probably just go and look up like best under twenty NHLers. Anybody on the top like fifty is going to be probably really. Yeah, good. what we yeah. have? Uh, uh, what was Craig Bun's list? We'll have Lucas Reich up forty four, and then like a random dude that <laughs> Simon Edmondson was number three. Like, I like yeah, he was behind. Edmondson, but he was behind Sander. Oh, there's another good one. Sanderson Stoitzla. Oh, Sanderson. If Alex, if Stoitzla. Oh, yeah. I don't no, know how to say his name. I've heard it's like, Tim. Awesome. It's Tim Stutzla. Stutzla. I've heard people call I know him Julia Stutzel. Will be pro, that's my baby Stutzla. Jimmy Stutz. Tim I just call him Jimothy at this point. I don't really care. <laughs> Jimothy. Um, Jimothy. Jimothy. Oh, wow. Such Jimothy. a good young defensive core. If they like actually hit their potential. Brandstrom, Thompson, God, I can't uh, wait to Bernard Talker, Sanderson. Sanderson. They, they have the potential to be a sick team. <laughs> and they're going to flood it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. They're going to fumble yeah. that bag so fucking hard. He's sad. Oh, you know who two guys we forgot? Since your buddy's a Washington fan, I like this. is McMichael and Lapierre. I do like Lapierre a lot. I, I think Hendricks Lapierre has potential to be like maybe one, two kind of like center kind of player. McMichael yeah. may be like a good 2C defensive kind of guy, but I, I, his game has fallen off a little bit for me, but... So he got rushed nice. too. It's, it's, he did get it's, rushed. It's the thing that happens with all these guys. They just get rushed right mm-hmm. out the shoot. We forgot sick. the most obvious one, Caden Gooley. Uh, but I saw empty tweets. Oh, so I was, actually, King I King was gonna. Gooley. I was gonna say uh, Dylan Gunther because he's been fucking. Gunther is gonna be sick too. That's yeah. Yeah. Edmonton Oil King. Hey, and you could have had Gunther. Prokop. We can't forget about him. Yeah, dude. Luke Prokop, so, literally uh, best defenseman prospect since Nick Lindstrom. Honestly, since uh, Bobby, yeah. for being honest. Honestly, yeah, he's not wrong. Like, um, yeah. If we keep it a bean, hmm? absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the that was the last question, though. So yeah. I'm gonna wake yeah. up screaming at night now because I just remembered somebody. 
like Let's 3 a.m. in a hot oh, sweat, be like, oh my god. I am interested to see where Nick Suzuki goes with this crew too. Like Suzuki and Caulfield's development is going to be really interesting, especially since we see what they can do under a real coach. So Mm -hmm. it is funny though that they were talking about and they said the offensive game under Martin St. Louis has been great, but the defensive game for Nick Suzuki has dropped off a cliff since St. or yes, since St. Louis taken over. Well, what would you rather have? That's the question at the end of the day. I'd rather have Caulfield scoring, so I'd go with the second one. But it's you know. You're not going to win he's games nine nothing or nine eight. No, yeah, yeah, I'm glad we're on the same guy from that one. <laughs> playing defense. Honestly, maybe they should hashtag play the game the right way. They didn't know. Not even that. Maybe they, they should, should just stop skilling it up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How could we? How could we forget about Jamie Drysdale, the man rocket himself? Jamie, the man rocket, for real though. <laughs> I, I I want he went from a guy I was like I really want on my team to a guy I don't want on my team because I don't want the Sims. <laughs> we have Owen Power, okay. Ah, dude, have you seen that? We're called Power and oh. I got far as and I was like, you guys, need you even just, huh? touch grass? Need Jesus? Yeah, Jesus. That's a better one, honestly. Why not both? Do you need Jesus made of grass? You need weed, Jesus. Weed, Jesus. Black Jesus, black, black Jesus. <laughs> it's easier That's to the save thing. the day. <laughs> they need that in the sexual harassment panda. <laughs> Hello, I'm sexual harassment panda. 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 <laughs> all right, but well, that's all I had for questions. <laughs> cool. I uh, I don't have any. Guys, I want to play a game before we go. Ooh. I love games. I'm on tankathon.com. And I want to play a game of how long, how many times will it take to get the Blackhawks' first overall pick? I'm going like right. nine times. To All right. Niner. I'm going to do two guesses. I bet you you get the Sabres in three and the Hawks in 14. All right. Well, Hawks put that to the Sabres. test. I've completely I'm forgotten Hawks the numbers already, to but yeah. Um, by the way, the Blackhawks have the sixth best odds, uh, a.k.a. Columbus. And it's funny because – it has like the record points and all that stuff, and like on streak losing is like a good thing. So it's like all green, and the, the Blackhawks have the most w- losses. It's eight, so eight. That's good. And it's then so Vancouver's good. like one four, and they're like red. So <laughs> nice. Anyways, we're so that's good, right, guys? One Seattle got first. Nice. Two New hey. Jersey moved up to to two. Okay, here we go. Three. Montreal and New Jersey okay. moved up to one and two. Four. Ooh. New Jersey moved up three spots to two again. Arizona first. Five. San Jose moved up nine spots to one and Seattle up to two, one spot up to two. Six. Seattle moved up to two. Buffalo moved up to – or no, sorry. Seattle moved up to one. Buffalo moved up to two. Take Seven. That. New Jersey moved up to no, number one. Halfway there. Eight, New Jersey moved up to one again. <laughs> okay, come on. Nine, Philadelphia moved up to two. We're so, close. We're so close. Ten, Chicago has moved Fuck. up to one. I was one off. Ah, Damn it. I was four off. Damn it. Close. And there it is. It took ten tries, and Detroit moved up to two in that one. How about that? That should be a consistent game. How many times did it, does it take for the Blackhawks to move up to number one? Honestly, though, more than take a shot. shot of your drink every time. Take okay. a shot of your beverage. I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> I'm hitting that you're point sure. where my brain's fried. So. <laughs> please, please, please ignore yeah, my yeah, pal here. He hasn't eaten for eight food. hours. His food yeah. never came. He's he's he's, he's literally trying. like just sitting here, just looking to see what I'm. Gonna gonna <laughs> <eat>. just, <laughs> he's just looking respectfully. Don't mind him. Yeah, just looking respectfully. Uh, actually, I'm looking disrespectfully. Let's be honest. <laughs> He's looking disrespectfully at Uber right Holy now. Like, disrespect. Okay, get them. Fucking assholes. Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> let's wrap this puppy up. Unless you guys have anything else what? to bring on. I, uh, I do not. No. I got nothing. Oh, I have this. Subscribe to my sub stack. Because How? I there we go. That's that's what we need to end it on. Because I'm because so I'm glad you're doing scouting for this draft again. Pierce, for better. the people who don't know, could you explain to us what a sub stack is? Uh, It's where you stack stuff on a sub. It's actually pretty cool. I'm doing like a totally it's... review thing. I love that for you. What a beast. Well, Lottie, where we go? 
No, but for real, subscribe to it because I, I have like a, I have like 125 players on like a Google spreadsheet, and I'm gonna sort them. I'm gonna make a top 125, and I'm gonna do scouting reports on as many players as I can. I'm trying to get one out on Friday, and it will be Owen Beck of the Mississauga Steelhead. So there's a there's a little nice sneak peek for you guys. I like Owen Beck a I'm lot. Excited, dude. Can't and wait to see what comes. I also follow that. my. Uh, my Twitter account. It's like, it's like called simplifying scouting with Pierce and I still need to like create a profile picture for it. And like the ad is like simplify a scout or something. So simplify. I think I already got like over five subscriptions already. And I got like 20 followers on the page. Anyways, but enough about me. Let's end up. Let's send it off here. So gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Yes. We can as always three hours this time. We made it to two. I think that's good enough. We can, uh, we are hashtag of us. And it's off here. Are we playing Minecraft after this? If you guys yeah, would like, we can. Oh, let's some, do it. Let's, let's I don't got to be up early tomorrow. I thought I did, but I don't. So you know what? Hey, I'm not, how about I, that? Oh, you do that. Right. Anyway. Oh, no. Anyways. Um, <laughs> anyways. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, give us a five-star rating on uh, your preferred platform, whether that's Spotify or Apple. And by the way, two years of the Peaches cast. April 12, 2020. Two that's years. Holy yeah, this is, the, this is another comparison of how the pandemic can one be five years and two be two minutes. <laughs> yeah, we started like a month, like literally a, a, exactly a month right after like everything shut down. Crazy. I love that. Weird to think that. And look, here we are. We have we have the non the only non Blackhawks fan wearing a Blackhawks jersey and chugging a beer. Let's go. I, Jacob, right, honestly. I, didn't, I, I didn't even know you. <laughs> you didn't time. wait no i think you did because i think she league has started during or like fuck, i don't I think know. it did i think it started like a few months later but i anyway. think you're right damn we didn't know each other when this started that's crazy Weird. now i'm like the unofficial fifth member let's go yeah schmitty wasn't even on the podcast either like, oh my god hold on to like the next year it's weird, it's weird to think that's that, amazing but... again i was the trade are. deadline acquisition last year yeah <laughs> i'm still, the rare you're... case of a trade line acqu- acquisition working past two Dude, weeks. you're the you're the Antoine Vermetta of our show <laughs> that's, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I that's the nicest that. thing you've ever said to us. We're champions, and the good champions too, not the kind that cover up sexual assault. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's. Anyways, last joke. Give us five star ratings. Give us all the good reviews, and bye.